What's good, everybody? This is Tico Tran. I'm here with TFM. Uh, this is going to be a lovely stream for everybody. We started, decided to start early because we were talking about a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I thought would be too good to pass up, basically. So take it away, TFM. <laughs> um, well, we can't just continue our conversation. I know. That, I was that say, would be I was... very, very jarring. You well, got to no, give me was... a topic to start I... Uh, we'll, we'll we'll start with the top. We'll start from the top with the topic that we were talking about with everybody being. We were talking about the argument and stuff like that, and we were talking about like um, how everybody, how people want inf have infinite ones and stuff like that, or how um, you know how how everybody's not really content um, in society, and even if they did it, they always want more, or they want you know more and more stuff. And, that goes for anybody, not just men or not just women, but men too, especially if they have like the wealth to actually do it. We'll start with that topic if that's okay with you. Okay. So I mean, so get us started. Like, All right. I mean, you just you gotta start a question or start uh, a question. Um how do you feel about well 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 I'll just I'll just run through a couple of questions that I had for you anyway, and we'll just work our way up to All that. Right. Um there we go. Um, what is your actual thoughts on the various the various extra pills that's been popping up in the manosphere, like uh, oh, purple that's, and black? That, yeah, so that's basically people bandwagoning. So when a term becomes, you know, what it's, it's like in video games. So if you remember a while ago, um, everyone was making an MMO back when World of Warcraft was popular, and then when League of Legends became popular, everyone was making a MOBA, and then when uh, PUBG was popular, everyone was making a battle royale game. Mm -hmm. And so, when something becomes popular, everybody just makes a version of it to try to cash in on the popularity of the thing. So there was a moment in time. Uh, this was around the time of GamerGate, when mm -hmm. anti-feminism and the red pill were in vogue. You know, their 15 minutes of fame had arrived, and because of that, that popularity at that time. Everyone rebranded what they had already believed in as some colored pill. Mm -hmm. So this is red pill. This is blue pill. This is purple pill. This is white pill. This is black pill. And it's basically shit that they believed prior to these pills, but they're just giving it a pill name to kind of like to try to sell it. They're trying. It, it's, I agree. it's like, yeah, you take up, you take a product you, you're already selling and then you change the name or you change the marketing, you change the branding on it to try to cash in on something. That's all it was. The The pills are meaningless. And now that MGTOW has been a hate group for like the better part of two years or something, uh, you know, MGTOW's withering. I mean, it's all basically social media is just cancer at this point. But uh, yeah, the, the pill thing I think is, is, is dying. People are no longer talking about this pill or that pill. Yeah. Now we're all back to talking about communism and capitalism again. <laughs> the original pill. True, true. The Very food true. pill. You gotta take, the, food take, pill take yeah. the food pill and abandon <laughs> communism. The calorie pill. Yeah. And this sucks. It sucks in a society because it, it's like, because I've, I've always been known to be like red pill. I'm red pill, but I'm MGTOW leaning. A lot of people refer to me as. And I've always, I've always watched the people, many people come in and out of the manosphere on a regular basis. And it's like, one minute they're this, the next minute they're this, the next minute they're a pickup artist, the next minute they're doing this, they're not, not, yeah. the now they're selling like coaching and stuff like that. And it's like five thousand dollars for what? Like, it's like, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I've always found it very rare, weird and very, like, I don't know, I'm because I, I come from, I come from. I, my upbringing, I'm very, um, I come from um, Caribbean uh, Latin upbringing, and it's one of those things where it's like, I'm, okay. I'm very, I'm very, I'm not narrow minded, I'm very like, I want to go this way, and this is what I need, and this is what I need to do to go this way. I don't need to be going like 90 different ways at one time. I just want to go this way, be successful, yeah. and so do what I need are, to do for all of these purposes. There are a lot of grifters, n not just in the manosphere, but everywhere. There's always someone trying to sell you something. Like, look, let's look at dieting. What is dieting? Dieting is limiting your calories and actually it's basically burning more calories than you eat. 
Yeah. Well, it, it, no, but like, think all, all dieting is is burning more calories than you eat. You could eat less, or you could exercise more, or you could do some combination. And then when when it comes down to eating less, it's like, okay, well, what food should you cut? Should you cut carbs? Should you cut fat? Should you cut portions? Uh, should you supplement with uh, vitamins? Should you fast? Should you have a, a meal replacement shake? You know, like there's all kinds of these different techniques. But essentially, all dieting is is limiting your calories to less or like eating less than you burn per day to yeah. lose weight or to maintain your weight. That's all it is. So True. what is the, what is, what is MGTOW? MGTOW is just owning your own life and not sacrificing yourself to a woman or society that doesn't value you and treats you like a, a disposable utility. Now True. there's all kinds of manifestations of that. There's all different ways and directions you can go. And people want to put different names on it. They want to say like, "Oh, the, the, we're the real MGTOW." Like I've I've seen it. I've heard it all. I've heard people say like, "To be Same. a real MGTOW, you have to you have to be divorced." If if you haven't been divorced, you're not a real MGTOW. I've had people. The, one of the later ones is people saying, uh, "Unless women want to have sex with you, you're not a MGTOW." Like so, if you're if you basically don't care about women and you don't chase women and women don't chase after you and throw their pussy at you they're like oh you're not going on your way you were sent your own way teehee and it's like that is the most blue pill shit ever you're telling someone I who's agree with doing you 100% their life on that. Like, <laughs> yeah they're not a MGTOW because uh they're not getting female validation on a regular basis now i don't care like i look at it this way if you understand female nature and you understand stuff like you still have that red pill like re the red pill is just the uncomfortable truth it's the yeah. ugly truth. So if you understand female nature and if you reject the idea that men and women are the same, that's that's basically the red pill. That doesn't necessarily make you a MGTOW, though, because you could take that red pill. You could be like, I understand men and women are different, and I'm going to become this alpha male, and I'm going to tame them with my cock, and they're going to be so addicted to my alpha peen that they'll never divorce me. And I, I'm just going to shake my head at you like you're stupid, um, but, you know, good, good luck. Let me know how that works sure. out for you. Yeah, because I know. Um, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100 percent on that one because I typically try not to do the whole entire main. I don't do the whole entire maintain frame type crap because I think it's always bullshit. However, I will say I am That's in a cool. relationship. I, I think it's all bullshit okay. for all the sense. But when a maintain maintain frame, bro, or I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not even that serious. Because at the end of the day, even though I'm in a relationship, I don't have to maintain frame. I just have to be myself. What part of that is hard okay. for people to do? Like typically my significant other likes me being myself. I don't never have to walk around looking like the big cock on campus, basically. Like I just be myself. And like if you ever know if you know anything about the Latin culture, we tend we tend to be very machismo about things. And like like I said, I've mm -hmm. I've there's been many times I've talked about it in the videos where I've said I walked up behind her while she's cutting food and slapped her right in the ass real hard and smiled and laughed and walked away. So it's one of those things where it's like like just be yourself really like you don't have to like fake like fake a frame that you really don't have because at, so, after a while somebody's going to see through it the the frame the frame thing is is a false hope so the, the problem isn't women the problem isn't you're not alpha enough to to get a woman to stick around the problem is the system is broken yeah it's like it, you know imagine a, a game or i don't can't i can't even think of an example it's such a broken system there's nothing to compare it to but it's a system where i mean i'll, I'll, I'll actually actually there is a way to compare it to so let's say me and you want to start a business together okay and so you're like hey tfm i you know you're a business guy i'm a business guy i got this really good idea i'd like you to come in as my partner and uh, we'll work together and i'm like okay well tell me the details and okay so here's here's how i see this um, you put out all the money, all right, and also do all the work. I'll do some work sometimes if I feel like it. And if we ever decide to dissolve the partnership, I keep all the intellectual property and you have to pay my salary for the rest of my life. Luckily, now, I wouldn't say no shit like it, that. I would, okay. <laughs> I, would look at you, I, would, I would look at you and I'd be like, no, that's the most retarded shit ever. Like, did you even hear... What came out of your mouth just now? You want me to put up all the money, do all the work. You you work when you feel like it, and then you keep the intellectual property, and then I have to pay your salary after we've dissolved the partnership forever. Like that's retarded. Yeah, no, that's, I'm not doing that now. Thing. And then it, I would actually expect and you then to when walk, I look at me and go, right? Go ahead. I would expect you to look right, at me and, and then go, when I'm like, 
<laughs> well, and, then, and then when I'm like, well, I'm not, so I'm, I'm not starting a business with you. And you're like, what? You don't trust me. You hate me. Like, no, it has <laughs> nothing to do with trust or hate. Th th these arrangements you're proposing where I put up all the money, do all the work. You do nothing unless you feel like it. And then you keep the property and then I have to pay your salary for life. That is retarded. That is insane. Even if like I trusted you, like, I mean, we moved to war together and you die for me type of trust, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. That system is broken. So unless you can come up with a more equitable contract, I'm not going to start a business with you. It has nothing to do with hate. Now, yeah. uh, uh, then, then some, some uh, business guru walks into the room. He overhears our argument and he says, hey, TFM, I have this. I got this trick. So I understand that these contracts are really one-sided and, uh, you know, if your business partner backs out, you'll have to pay a salary for life. He keeps the IP and you lose all your money, but check this out. If you wash with this soap, <laughs> you'll maintain frame and any business contracts you enter into, these guys are going to be hypnotized by your manly alpha male cologne. And they're going to be like, I will never back out of this contract, even if it benefits me. Like that's PUA shit. PUAs yeah. basically are selling false hope to compensate because like they know the system is broken. And instead of trying to say, Hey man, the system is broken. We got to fucking, we got to bounce. We got to go somewhere where the, the laws aren't shit or just walk away from women, get a waifu or something. They can't admit that. So they're like, Oh yeah. no, you don't, you could still fuck around with women. Just, you know, bathe in this soap, wear this cologne, go to my seminar, buy my book. Um, and what this is, is uh, when, when the, uh, the British had colonies in Africa, uh, I think it was the Zulu, but I'm not 100. percent It might be a different tribe in Africa. They were charging the the machine gun nests and getting mowed down by the hundreds. And mm. the British captured some of these uh, tribals. Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you charging our gun nests? We're killing you by the score. And they're like, oh no, because the witch doctor put paint on us that makes us bulletproof. And they were yeah. like, well, did you see all the people around you getting cut down? And it wasn't working. Did you ever question the paint? And they're like, well, no, this because they didn't have faith, but I did. So when I saw everyone around me getting cut apart by machine gun fire, I never questioned it because they just didn't have enough faith, but not me. I'm going to be fine. And that's exactly what you see when it comes to these, these bullshit artists spreading lies and false hope saying that even though the system is broken, I'm going to teach you this trick that's going to allow you to be bulletproof. And you could charge the gun nest and the bullets won't touch you because I got this war paint I'm going to put on you. Now, yeah. um, and it's not just the PUAs. The PUAs try to tell you if you maintain frame, that's their magic secret. Maintain frame. And then you're even though the system is totally broken, your wife or girlfriend will never use all the tools she has. And they use every yeah. day fuck you in the ass. Now, the other alternate is that is, is what the trad cucks do these traditional conservatives, they say, Oh, if you just marry a virgin and she's from a good Christian background, Oh, the, then she'll, she, you know, she's not a feminist. It's all, it's the same bullshit. It's all false hope. It's yeah. all just, if you just, if you do this, you don't like the problem is the system. The problem is there's machine guns on that Hill. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me to charge a fucking Hill with machine guns pointed at me and tell me the war paint's going to protect me. Either give me a shield or, do an airdrop and drop, take out the gun nest. Like that's what, that's what a, a smart, not retarded person would call for. So right now in, in the West, the system is totally broken. And now if getting married and having a family and that validation from society and from women is the end all be all of your life. I, good luck. I mean, and the thing is there are good women out there. I'm not saying they're all like gold digging thoughts who will fuck you over. It's just that it's impossible to tell one from the other. Impossible. Not only do people change over time, but you know, women are really good liars and manipulators. A true story. So, Very true. and you know, it doesn't matter. You could marry a virgin. You can marry a Christian. It doesn't matter. I've known way too many people who married virgin Christians and got divorce raped. So there's no way to protect yourself. You're essentially, you're betting your future, your life, your freedom, that your wife isn't going to have a change of heart at any point in her entire life when she has all the incentive to do so. It's a stupid deal. And it's the only reason why you would take it is because you value the validation uh, of society and women more than the freedom 
or you're just lazy and you're like, oh, going to Asia, that's too much work. Oh, waifu, people will make fun of me. Ooh, I guess I'll just risk my life and freedom. And it's like, okay, good luck. I, <laughs> I honestly, stupid. yeah, no. Well, but look, if yeah, I mean, it's like the risk of your life and freedom I, I for, yeah, go ahead. But I can't tell you what your life is worth. You know, value is subjective. If you value the validation of women more than your freedom, I can't tell you you're wrong because it's subjective. Like, you know, some people are into some people give women hundreds of dollars for feet picks. I have I'm not I hate feet. I'm not into feet at all. I don't yeah, I hate feet too. I mean I don't hate feet. I'm not like hey, feet, feet, get feet, away from feet, me, but I'm dog not, feet, I'm baby feet, not, cat feet. Mm, don't put it on me. <laughs> oh well, I mean I'm not I'm fine with feet. I'm not gonna like pay someone money to for pictures of their feet yeah. but obviously there are people out there who love feet and they value pictures of feet more than money so they will give people money for feet and i've seen ones where uh there are girls these are attractive girls don't get me wrong guys will pay them money to use like one of those those petty ball sanding devices and save the skin shavings from their calloused feet into bags and mail it to them mm. so they can i don't know eat them or something and absorb mm. their feet power and they'll give them as... hundreds of dollars for their, their feet. No, my point is, though. My, yeah, no, that's almost as bad as black point. Point. when black people used to say, I'll drink our bath water. I'm like, no. <laughs> my, my point is, though, is that there are what we would consider worthless, like feet shavings. Like, you know, we, if you ever, if you use like a, some type of pedicure device on your soles of your feet to get rid of calluses, you just put those in the trash. You yeah. don't save them in a baggie and sell them for hundreds of dollars. But if you're an attractive woman, some guy out there will buy your feet shavings. They'll buy your toenail clippings. They'll buy your dirty socks. And clearly they value those things more than money and it's it's whatever. So if you value the validation of a woman more than your freedom, just like these simps who send women money for their feet shavings and toenails, who am I to tell you you're wrong? True. And honestly, you know, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want anyone's life to be destroyed. So if you're committed to getting married and having a family in the West, I sincerely hope you're the one in 10. I hope you're the one guy who finds the good woman and doesn't get divorced and you live happily ever after. I, I sincerely hope you're the one in 10. But unfortunately, statistically, you are you have 90 percent likely to not be. True story. This is typically why I don't even try to whole entire marriage route. Um anymore anymore i mean i've never been divorced rape or anything like that because typically like my my past wife passed away for all intents purposes in a car accident oh, but shit. it's one of those yeah so Man, it's one of those things bad. where it's like yeah so it's one of those things where like perfect crime. yeah <laughs> yeah and it's one of those so it's one of those things where it's like i i can i can actually relate to the people when they actually get divorced rape because i kind of sort of put it equivalent to like losing your wife and your child in a car accident, a jackknife truck accident. So it's one of those things where it's like, even though even though you lost yours temporarily, you can always see your children. Despite the fact that I can't see mine, I can understand where you're coming from. Um, it's typically always look at it, but it's one of those things where it's very, it's a very, it's it's a very hard pill to swallow at the end of the day. And it's like you got to take it one day at a time. And and it's one of those things where it's like even if you lose custody of your children, there there are ways and routes that you can go about getting it back and, and or lessening your mm -hmm. child support in doing so if you're willing to actually put no. in the work to do so. No, no, that's a, well, there really is. So I've known guys who have literally bankrupted themselves going back to family court over and over again, trying to get their custody of their kids and or trying to lower their child support. And they just go bankrupt. The family court doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, but uh, your they're, best, they're, your best they're, they're, Title 4D thing that I've, I've known everybody's been talking about lately where there's a lot of people that's been getting out of child support and or lessening their child support or just, you know, getting rid of mitigating a lot of the other costs that they would normally have by taking that route um, was the Title 4D stuff that everybody has been doing lately. I mean, you, you can go down that route. I honestly think your best bet, if you actually want equitable treatment in family court is become a trans woman. Like I'm true story. I'm not even, not even on a complete, like if you look it up. I agree. So I, well, I mean, just for your audience, if you look it up, gay and lesbian couples get 50, 50 joint custody standard heterosexual couples, the woman gets uh, 
primary custody 96% of the time. Not joint custody. The woman gets primary custody, and the man uh, maybe get joint or primary custody 4% of the time. So you're talking about a 96-4 split in favor of the woman when it comes to heterosexual couples, and then 50-50 even split when it comes to gay couples. So mm -hmm. all you have to do to literally get a fair shake in family court is show up in a fucking dress and like a, a sash tied around your Adam's apple and speak in a high pitch and talk about how what a, what a stunning and brave trans woman you are. And then the judge will be like, oh, you're so stunning and brave. And then there you go. And now you have 50-50 joint custody. Because the, the problem is when you go to family court as a man, the burden of proof is on you to prove she's a piece of shit. Because if all things being equal, she's going to get primary custody. You're going to get visitation. You're going to be paying through the nose and child support. But if you're both women, then they're going to be, oh, 50-50 joint custody. Ta-da. Mm -hmm. it, it's just – now – the fact that it doesn't make sense and it's not fair, that's irrelevant. The, this, is the, this is the world we live in. These are the rules of the game. So learn the rules of the game and play the game. Complaining about the rules. Like if you're playing a game and the rules are unfair, you have a couple options. You can complain about the rules being unfair. You can quit the game or you can use the unfair rules to your advantage. True story. And that's not that that's. In, whether it's a board game or whether it's a country with shitty biased laws, you have the same three options. You can bitch about the rules and, and accomplish nothing. You can quit the game. You can move to another country. Or you can use the rules to your advantage. So learn the rules. And th these aren't. it's not hard to use the system to your advantage. It's not like there's these crazy obstacles in your way. It really just takes a matter of swallowing your pride and stop giving a shit about what people think. And what's dumb is... It's not like you have to get your dick cut off. You get your driver's license and your birth certificate updated, and then you're done. Then you're official. You can still wear men's clothes, use male pronouns, whatever. That doesn't matter. Um, and it's not like people check your driver's license on a daily basis. True. <laughs> so it, it literally has no negative effect on your life. And it is essentially your, your in-the-hole, get-out-of-jail-free card to a whole bunch of shit. Like I've had a bunch of people talk to me. Uh, one guy was working at a restaurant and the boss's girlfriend was also working at the restaurant. So his boss was fucking one of the waitresses and she tried to get him in trouble. And, you know, because he told the boss he was trans, uh, nothing happened to him. She's like, she oh, tried nice. to like say that he sexually harassed her. Right. So she went from, Oh, he, you're sexually harassing me. She tried to pull the, the me too card. But because he was trans, the boss didn't believe her. Now, if he wasn't trans, he would have been fired. Um, there was I've, I've seen example after example. In fact, I challenge people in my audience, if you've had a negative example, if you've come out as trans, if you've updated your driver's license birth certificate, and it's had any negative consequence on your life at all, let me know. And I have yet to hear any response from that. So I get story after story of people who've used being trans to get out of shit. I've heard no negative story whatsoever of it having any negative outcome in their life at all. Yeah, true. Because I've, I've actually had people in, who've actually listened to me that actually just came out and said, not really came out, but, you know, just used it. Like if they were going to get fired from a job, they would say, I'm gay. And nothing would happen or they would either settle out of court, basically. Well, the job of the other set out of court too. I've noticed um, with that, but it's the, the but it's much more is, it's much better if, it's is, much better if you go trans though. Well, the problem with being saying you're gay as you're being fired is it's like a woman claiming that you you're a, a accusing you of domestic violence during a, a heated divorce. Like the, the, she never mentioned domestic violence before, but then during the divorce, like oh yeah, he beat me every day, he rapes the kids, he worships Satan, and it's like you're just saying that shit because you're in a messy divorce, like and everyone knows it. So yeah, if the judge really is a misandric uh, fucking cunt, maybe she'll believe you and whatever. But they, in family court, it's so common for women to just accuse their husbands of shit that they've never brought up before that it's a joke. And mm -hmm. they really don't take it seriously. However, let's say you changed your driver's license, your birth certificate a year before you were fired. So you, all your paperwork is in place you, you, and you even let H and, and here's the thing. If you let HR know, you don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just go to HR and be like, by the way, um, I'm trans and I've updated my birth certificate and driver's license. So I'd just like you to update my records in HR. Um, but I, I still use male pronouns. Um, I know what I look like. I'm not trying to make anyone uncomfortable. I'm not trying to force my views on anyone. I just want to let, make you aware 
of this is my truth and that's all I want. I'm not trying to create a scene. I don't want any special attention or favors. And the people in HR are going to be like, oh, thank God. Thank God we don't have the GameStop <laughs> ma'am on our hands. Is it, you know, like they don't want the GameStop ma'am yet yelling yeah. at people and starting fights in the parking lot. So they're going to be relieved when they hear that. And then the best part is they're going to start marking you as a diversity hire. So they yeah. get to mark the, the LGBT box. And so they're going to get bonus points for that. So they're going to love you. So even when layoffs do happen, you're going to be passed over. In fact, I've, I've, I've heard stories of people. Now, I can't verify this. This is like secondhand stories of people telling me this happened. But this guy, he was working at a company for a couple of years. And he, he came out as, as a trans woman. He got his paperwork updated. So he was official. He went and told HR and he got instantly promoted wow. on the spot. Because I believe it. they were looking for, because a lot of them are under pressure to have uh, diverse middle management. They want more women and, and lesser represented groups in middle management. So he had worked there for a couple of years. So he was already qualified, but because he was a straight man, uh, they weren't going to promote him. They were looking for a woman or a minority or something. But then when he was a trans woman, instant promotion. So not only was he not fired, he was instantly promoted, like on the spot. Just because he changed his driver's license. It is literally the cheat code for life. And the best, here's the sweetest plum. Uh, this year, like just a few months ago, the Supreme Court, for the first time, upheld trans people as a protected group. Oh, wow. Now, you, wow. May not realize, you, may not, you may not realize how monumentally huge that is. So you even understand that the way equality works is you have to be on the special list. So you can't discriminate against people because they're black. Or because they're Jewish or because they're women, because that they're on the special list. But if you're discriminated against for being Christian or white or a man, no one cares. So when the law says you cannot discriminate on the basis of race or sex, they're literally only talking about unless you're a white man. It, then it's okay to discriminate against you because you're not on yeah. the special list. So now you can't change your race, you can't change your gender, uh, you can't change the genitalia between your legs. So if you're born happen to be born a white man, uh, you're kind of fucked. Cause you can't just like go, go and, and get your race changed. So you now all these laws are against you and you can't use them to your advantage. But trans stuff is 100% in your, under your control. You can't become a woman. You can't become black. You can become a trans woman. And now that trans people are part of the, the special list, everyone can now be on the special list. If you're not on the special list, it's because of your pride and you're basically just making life harder on yourself. Just think of this as like a cheat code for life. And there's no downside to it. At all. And if there is, again, I challenge anyone who's had a bad experience where being a trans woman has negatively affected their life in any way, let me know. DM me on Discord, email me, come on the show, talk about it. No one's, I've had no takers. I, I, I don't think there will be any takers because that's, that's pretty much all damn there. I wouldn't say foolproof, but it's, it's damn near. Damn near close to being foolproof. So, like, the chance of somebody actually just going against the grain and going, well, I'm firing you anyway, is, like, very slim to none because it's all about a public opinion and how people would be perceived if they were to do so. So people actually think about things like this typically. So they mm -hmm. typically won't fire somebody because, because they'll look a certain way or, or the company would get, like, you know, now we got this – what they call it, Yelp now, I think it's called, where they, they just, oh, well, they hate trans people, this, that, and the other. And so, like, now your company's known for hating trans people. Now you've lost a big section of people, and then you lost another section of people who support that people. Then then you, you right. now you're losing now, sections again, of people based on, you know, who you're losing. Like, you'll lose the men because those women stop supporting you because you, you don't support right. trans women. Now, so it's like, oh. <laughs> no, here's, here's the thing. I didn't create this system, the system of grievance mongering and uh, cancel culture. I had nothing to do with that. I don't I don't even want to live in a world like that. I would love it if all that shit went away. But for right now, this is the world we live in. So you can learn the rules of the game and use them to your advantage, or you can just complain about it as you lose. Or you could quit the game and go live in another country. Those are your options. True. So it's Fair. like, I'm just letting you know, you know, be, just, you don't have to use it. Like some people like to play, like you ever see those people who play Dark Souls and like 
with no, like they use the starting gear. They have like a, a wooden sword in their underwear with no armor, and they beat the whole game without getting hit once because they're just like they want to prove how badass they are. They play on the highest difficulty. That's mm -hmm. fine. If that's you, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and you play Dark Souls in the hardest difficulty with no armor with a stick. Um, but other people who are like, you know what? I'm tired of getting fired. I'm tired of financial insecurity. I'm tired of a Me Too accusation waiting for me behind every corner. True. You have options. The question is, are, we, are you willing to take those options? Or, or will you put, put aside your pride long enough to be able to take those options so you can actually better yourself? Mm -hmm. That's all it really is. It's like that is it. That's all it is. The only thing stopping you is your pride. It would be like, I don't even know. Imagine uh, you're playing a video game, and the best armor in the game is like a neon pink tutu. You know, like it's just it's just stupid. It's like a gag. Yeah, I know. They, they made the best, they made the best armor in the game a pink tutu, and if you put on this pink tutu, you're basically invincible. Now, you don't have to put on the pink tutu. You can play the game, make it harder for yourself. Or you could put on the pink tutu and then have turn god mode on, essentially. it's The choice is yours. But, you know, when you see guys killing themselves, when you see guys having their lives completely ruined through false accusations, divorce, so many things, mm -hmm. and you have this pink tutu that activates god mode, and you're like, take the tutu. And it's like, bro, you're going to your life is going to be destroyed and you're going to kill yourself. Put yeah. on the tutu. Like why your pride isn't worth your life. Sure enough, ain't shoot, especially if you got God mode. <laughs> if you get God mode at any given time, shoot, it's definitely not worth it. It's definitely not worth it. You can change stuff around for the better if you want to. You can manipulate free will if you want to. You can pretty much do anything you want to with God, God in God mode. Well, I'm talking like God mode, like in a video game. Oh, well, yeah, God mode in a video game, yeah. Not like you have omnipotence or anything. I, I know what you mean, though. That's what I was talking about. Like, you could pretty much manipulate your surroundings at that point. Like, because I played Dark Souls on easy, and it's not even easy. <laughs> when I first started yeah. playing, I used to get killed all the day on time. It's like, oh, come on. Then, it, then you yeah. eventually learn more technique, and you learn what works, what doesn't work, what weapon's good with this, what... What you should not try right. to get yourself into, what you should try to get yourself into, you learn very quickly in that game <laughs> because everything can kill you, literally. Right. <laughs> yeah, but um, next question would be uh, you pretty much ran into the next question with that whole entire topic, but that wasn't that one is out the window. Uh, okay. What are your thoughts on? What are your thoughts on like the current state of the world and current state of everything going on politically, both politically and both um, abroad? Uh, well, so America was founded on freedom in the 1700s. Um, and that was a, a good time. But starting in the late 1800s, early 1900s with the social gospel and progressive movements, America switched from being a country whose highest value was freedom to a country whose highest value was equality. Mm -hmm. um, and progressivism has enshrined itself as the unofficial official religion of all of Western civilization. The way that Christianity took over the Roman Empire and spread mm -hmm. throughout Europe and the Western world, progressivism is the new religion that has infected and spread throughout the entire Western world. And progressivism is basically just communism light. It leads directly mm -hmm. to communism. But people, it's, it's like if you took communism but made it a religion rather than an economic system, it would literally be progressivism. Progressivism is to religion what communism is to economics or government rather. Um, so... The problem is the entire West has been infected with this religion known as progressivism. And the average person believes it. The average person believes in equality. They believe that equality is the highest value of their country, that it's a good thing. And if you denounce equality, uh, then you're evil. You're a bad person. You shouldn't be listened to. You're a menace. And this isn't just a, this is not a minority opinion. This isn't a slight majority opinion. This is an overwhelming majority opinion. We're talking 90% of people in America, which is the land of the free home of the brave. You go to Europe where they have free this, free that, give me that, give me that. 
it's like damn near a hundred percent. So essentially America died a hundred years ago. Uh, we, we've been living on the corpse and that you can't save it. Like the only, there's only two ways you can save people who are making bad decisions. You can use force and force them to make the right decision, which they'll hate you and resent you. And then you have to have the force to do it. Like when you're only 10% of the population, you don't have the force to control 90% as they hate you and rebel against you. They'll just overthrow you and then go back to doing what they were doing. So the only thing you can do, the only path is to just let them suffer the consequences of their stupidity. Just, just let them go. They, oh, they want equality. They want free shit. They want to, you know, okay, enjoy the hyperinflation. Enjoy starving to death. And they'll be like, oh, TFM. No, America will never collapse. I mean, look at look at all these other countries. Amer like this people, I mean, all you got to do is go back to uh, prior to the Soviet Union. Look at like the 70s and 80s because the Soviet mm -hmm. Union collapsed in 93. No one said Soviet Union was going to collapse. Everyone's like, the Soviet Union will never collapse. We're going to have to deal with this. We're going to have to, we need to work with the Soviet Union. We need to have a, a smooth transition from capitalism to communism because the Soviet Union is here to stay. And then in the early 2000s, uh, everyone was saying Venezuela was a model for the world and it's going to be here forever. We all need to uh, follow the example of Venezuela. And then it collapsed. It collapses very suddenly. And I hear the same people saying, oh, America will never collapse. America's here forever. Oh, yeah, we're printing a lot of money. Yeah, we're causing inflation. Um, but that doesn't matter. That's just money we owe ourselves. And it's just like, I, I can't save you. You don't, first of all, A, I can't save you. B, you don't deserve to be saved and you can't be saved. So, you know, I'm going to vote for Trump, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like Trump is it's going still to do shit. It's basically, it's basically yeah. just nothing more to slow it down. He's basically just slowing it down just a bit. Yeah, all you can do, all you can do is pump the brakes. Like we're basically on a one-way train headed for a cliff. And you can you can hold on to the brakes, but all it's doing is slowing the train down. But we're going so fast and the, the cliff is so close that you cannot stop the train in time. Now, this doesn't mean you don't hit the brakes, but why are you hitting the brakes? If you're only hitting the brakes so that you can live a little bit longer, then what's the point? What's the point if you're going to if you're going off a cliff in a train and holding down the brakes is going to cause you to live 30 seconds longer? Who cares? What is 30 seconds? If you're, but if you're going to use that 30 seconds to get people off the train, if you're going to if people are actively evacuating the train and 30 seconds makes a difference between a dozen people jumping to their safety and living or going off the side of the cliff, then it's worth holding the brake down. So it doesn't mean you don't hit the brakes. But it's like, but what are you doing? So I, I vote for Trump, vote for the right, you know, pump those brakes. But this is you're buying yourself time, but you need to use that time. If all you're going to do is go back to sleep, like like hitting the snooze button. Oh, no, communism. I hit the snooze button. Oh, thank God. We right? stopped communism. <laughs> and then you go back to bed and then you wake up 10 minutes later. Oh, no, communism's back. OK, snooze. OK, we stopped it. It's like, why don't you either fix the problem, which you, you realistically can't do? Uh -huh. um, so what do you do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when the when the snooze button doesn't work anymore and the communists are at your doorstep? What are you gonna do? And if the like and right now, like I know I'm blunt and people say I'm nihilistic and black pilled. I'm the doctor telling you you're going to die of a heart attack. I, I'm basically telling you you have stage one cancer. Uh -huh. You have stage one cancer. If you do nothing, if you ignore this, you're going to die. If you take drastic action, we can save your life. But you can't just say, oh, doc, stage one cancer. You know, you're an incel. Who hurt you? Why do you hate cancer? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> right. It, it's like, look, dipshit. If you take actions today, you can actually get by fairly unscathed. Like if you catch cancer early enough. You can might be able to get take care of it with an outpatient procedure. Now, if you catch it at stage two, you're going to have to do very painful rounds of chemo and radiation. Your hair is going to fall out. You're going to look like shit for months, but you might live. It's going to be True. painful. It's going to be touch and go, but you have a pretty good chance of living. You're going to be tired. You're going to be very three, three. Oh, yeah. Right. At, now, at stage three, you may not feel the symptoms yet. You may not be throwing blood up. But you basically can't be saved. At, once you have stage three cancer, you're basically right before the, the phase where you're going to be in a hospital. 
So you're like, oh, you know, I feel great. What are you talking about, Doc? Like, look, you have this cancer. It's stage three. We, it's too spread. We can't save you. So enjoy the time you have. You know, you're in about six months. You're going to be bedridden, mm -hmm. throwing blood up, and you're going to be on morphine, waiting to die. So you know, if you have anything on your bucket list, cross it off now. Now, even even then, that's still useful. Knowing you only have six months to live at least gives you six months to enjoy your life before you're throwing sure. up blood in a in a hospital bed. Now, now imagine you have stage four cancer. You're basically in the hospital dying. And you're like, okay, doc, I'm ready for that chemo now. And like, I can't save you. You waited it's too really long. Right. You ignored my advice. And now you're dying in a hospital bed. The cancer is it completely overwhelmed you. There's nothing left to save. All your tissue is infected with cancer. You're going to die. All I can do is give you a painkiller so you can be high and, I don't know, enjoy your last few days before you die. That's all True. you can do. And so the average person will not be ready to make a change until they already have four, stage four cancer. Yeah. Only when they're throwing blood up in a hospital bed will they're like, okay, now I'm ready to change. It's too late. You're fucked. Yeah. But Just at stage work. one, at stage one, we can fix this today. We No war, no death. We can literally solve all our problems today with a minimum of, of pain. And no one's interested. They're all like, oh, fuck you. That's extreme. Then when stage two, has, so stage one is like, you know, we have inflation. Uh, people are warning about the welfare dependence, the crime, the poverty, the uh, the, the unsustainability of the welfare state, the, the demographic problems. Like people aren't having enough kids. Uh, we're, we're increasing reliance on immigration. We're increasingly becoming multicultural. These are problems. Mm -hmm. Now, stage two, state, that's stage one cancer. Stage two cancer is when you have... Muslim terrorists uh, raping kids and running people over with trucks and stabbing them to death in the street. And then the government knows they can't get rid of them. So they start like shutting down people talking about it under hate speech laws. They start banning knives. The UK is at stage two cancer. Mm -hmm. Stage three cancer is, uh, yeah. is South Africa. I agree. South Africa is stage, stage three cancer. Stage four cancer is basically the Warsaw ghetto in Nazi Germany. When you're already, you've already been herded into the ghetto and uh, you're, you're dead. You're, you're disarmed. You're enslaved. You're basically just waiting for your cattle car to take you to the ovens. And at that stage, you're like, okay, I'm ready to fight now, TFM. I'm like, bro, you're fucked. Make peace with your God because you're dead. You waited way too long to get your head out of your ass and now you're fucked. So, you yeah. know, that's, that's, unfortunately, human nature is such that people are often short-sighted and they choose the path of least resistance. So right now at stage one cancer, uh, we could solve this problem fairly easily, but we have to take women's rights away and taper the welfare state off. And we're not feeling any pain right now. The inflation isn't really hurting us yet. The crime, the poverty the immigration, the multiculturalism, people aren't, I mean, you see like this year with the riots, some people have been shot and killed in broad daylight, but we're not talking like the level that's super significant. Uh, so the pain has not been painful enough to cause people to even consider so-called drastic action, like taking women's rights away to raise your fertility rate and getting off of welfare. At stage two, you have the UK where knives are banned, guns are banned, free speech is banned. Everyone is just kind of quietly hoping the Muslims don't murder people today. And then, you know, in France, a, a, a teacher showed a cartoon of Muhammad, got his head sawn off by his own student. And now there's terrorist attacks going on because they're trying to, like, stand up against the Muslims. And now it's too late. So yeah, France is late. fucked. And But that's stage two cancer. So people are starting to wake up. But it's still – if you pulled France – Hey, should we uh, kick all these Muslims out, take women's rights away, and get rid of welfare, thus eliminating the need for immigration in the first place? They'll be like, "No, that's too extreme." That's yeah, too no, that's yeah, the sad part. It's like you're in the midst of it right now, and you're and you're already you're still saying that it's a bit too extreme, well, despite because, the fact that you just watched my interview. They only have stage because they only have stage two cancer. Oh yeah, true. So the, the stage two cancer isn't painful enough. When they have stage three cancer, when they're living in South Africa and they're being hunted down like animals on their farms and mm -hmm. the government is basically like coming for them and they have to buckle down into communities, they're like, 
you know, maybe we should take women's rights away. <laughs> maybe <laughs> now maybe maybe we get a point there. <laughs> but at, at that point, you know, like, and the thing that's crazy is you have the people who go to Irania, like the, the, the Afrikaners who go to Irania. There's a lot of Afrikaners who basically don't want to give up their farms. So these are family farms that have been there that all their wealth is tied to these farms. So even though they're going to die, they will stay on their farm wondering if today's the day when they just get raided and killed rather than just walk away from their farm and go to Irania and live. That's stage three cancer. Mm -hmm. And like you also see this, you see this exact same situation mirrored in the cities during the riots, because in the riots, you had three kinds of people. You had the people who left the city, the smart people. You had the people who formed communities like the Hispanics, the Asians, the Muslims, who basically fortified their communities and told the rioters, we will shoot the fuck out of you. And then when the cops came, they're like, we'll shoot the fuck out of you too. And the cops like turned around and left. And then you had the, the poor people not poor people as economically poor, but the, the pitiful mm. people who put signs in their windows saying, we support black lives. Don't loot my store. This is all I have. And then you see like these, these businesses on fire with signs in their front of their business saying black lives matter as they're burning to, to the ground. Or and those are the three kinds is, of people. Um, are, or my, my, my favorite ones are the people who put in their signs put in their window. I am a minority or a business owned by minorities. Um, I've seen that a lot too, or it, business black owned business. I've seen a lot of people do too, just right. to avoid getting their stores well, burned. To try, I mean, right? They'll, they'll they'll try. The thing is, it's not about it's not even about black people. It, it they're communists. The bl Antifa, Black Lives Matter. That's not my opinion. The, the founders of Black Lives Matter were Marxists. They're admitted Marxists. Anti. These yeah, are all actually, organizations. The one actually in a live that. video that she was a Marxist and she was trained. Yeah, the, the uh, if you think this is about police brutality and anything having to do with black people, you're stupid. This is just communism. Uh, it's it's all communism. But unfortunately, you know, as long as people, the average person, it's like the homeless problem. Like in in um, in San Francisco or California in general, there's a really bad homeless problem. And the people who have to deal with the homeless problem keep begging the city to do something. Like these homeless people are shitting on the street, leaving heroin needles everywhere, uh, harassing customers. And they keep telling the, the city council, please do something about the homeless problem. But the people who don't live in the city and don't have to interact with the homeless, they virtue signal and outvote the people who have to deal with the homeless. So people who have to deal with the homeless keep getting outvoted by the dipshits who live in the suburbs or live on the outskirts where the homeless people don't bother them who want to feel like they're good people. And by the same token, there are people who want to do something about the communism, but it had because it's not affecting the average person. The average person still has the luxury to virtue signal their value of equality. Again, progressivism enshrined equality as a religious value since the 1900s. It says what we believe. We don't believe in freedom anymore. We believe in equality. And so unless the pain is hitting you, you're not going to question. It's just like if you were if you grew up in some cult. You know, but you've never had to, you've never had a thing that called it into question. You're not going to question it. Only when something happens that's going to force you to question it will you start to question what these beliefs were raised in. And most people, they only question equality when they're starving to death or when they're being hunted down and killed. Only then we'll be like, hey, maybe communism doesn't work. So, unfortunately, as far as the political landscape and the culture war, it's over. Yeah. The culture war is over. The, the, they, the left won. Now, it doesn't mean you don't pump the brake, but while you're pumping the brake, while you're voting for Trump, while you're going MAGA, what are you going to do? Because the cancer is advancing. Now, you can't cure the cancer, but you can save yourself. You can do something to preserve your uh, – like the, the, the phrase I like to use is you can't save the empire, but you can save Rome. Yeah. You have to let the empire go. The empire is going to collapse. But if, if everyone goes to Rome and we, we bunker down, we fortify Rome, we can keep Rome from being destroyed. And what happened in the Western Roman Empire was when the Roman Empire was completely obliterated because it was spread too thin. It was trying to hold the empire together. And they got overwhelmed, destroyed. And then the, the Goths and the Germans essentially conquered the Western Empire. And then Rome was gone. It was just completely gone. So... If that didn't have to happen, had Rome realized, okay, we're spread too thin, we don't have the numbers to hold on to the empire, we need to let the empire go. But let's go to let's go to Italy, let's go to Rome, let's fortify, dig in, 
take women's rights away, get her fertility rate back up, which is what Majorian, Emperor Majorian was the last great emperor of the Roman Empire. He actually, at the 11th hour, took women's rights away to raise the fertility rate. It was too little too late. He ended up getting assassinated. Uh, well, he was captured and tortured to death. He wasn't just assassinated. But he was the last good emperor of Rome. Mm -hmm. So, but had Majorian not been killed, had Majorian not spread his forces thin, had he consolidated in Italy and instituted his reforms, which raised the fertility rate, Rome could have come back. It would have taken a, a generation, like 20, 30, 50 years. But, you know, as their fertility rate rose, as they buckled down, as they fortified their shit, they could have reconquered the Roman Empire. Imagine instead of the Dark Ages for a thousand years, it was like a hiccup. Mm -hmm. The Roman Empire, and there were periods where the Roman Empire retreated, where they lost ground, they lost provinces, and they had to take them back, you know, decades later. That's what it would have been. The Roman Empire almost collapsed, and on the brink of collapse, Majorian saves the Roman Empire, and then 50 years later, you know, his son or, or somebody else comes in, and then they start reconquering Italy. And then they, after they reconquer Italy, they go out and they reconquer Gaul. And they, they reconquer and they reestablish the Roman Empire from the brink of collapse because they preserved Rome. But th because they were trying to hold on to the empire, they got completely wiped out and it, it, it ushered in the Dark Ages. So you have to understand you can't save America. You can't save the West. But you can save Rome. You can save your people, your culture, your your uh your values and from there you know like there's that this is kind of cliche because it's from a disney movie but you know thor ragnarok where you know asgard was taken over and and odin's like you know asgard isn't a place it's its people this could be asgard he's like looking around wherever he is and honestly you know it's the same thing with america what is america america is the values of america which is freedom so that america is long dead but it can be re it can be rebuilt, just like the Roman Empire could have been rebuilt had Majorian not spread his forces too thin. American can be reestablished. You know, land can be reconquered, cities can be rebuilt. But if we're completely wiped out because we're trying to win the culture war with ten percent of the population, we're fucked. And then we're all wiped out. And then the Dark Ages are here. So my goal isn't to save America or win the culture war. My goal is to prevent the Dark Ages. I agree. Yeah, um, that's good. I agree on that one because I, I've because uh, I've always said when it when it comes to communism, I'll say that America in America we're too selfish to be communist because it's just true we are we we're way too selfish to be communist. It's usually what I say on the it's argument. Not a, but that's not a that's not an American thing. That's a human thing. Humans yeah, are no, too that's selfish what I said. to be communist. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we're just too we're just too selfish to be communist. So. I can't really see communism ever really lasting that long before people say, well, yeah, like you said, basically, oh, well, this this is not what I expected it to be, or this is not fair, or we're all starving now. You know, so, and, and then there's going to be the group of people that go, what do you mean I got to give up stuff evenly? This is mine. Like, so you're going to have those people too as well. So it's. So, well, I'll use a Bible example. So in the early church, the Christians actually practiced communal property. Even in the Bible times, people were stealing and not like basically they were holding back part of their property. They were supposed to give up all their property and, and share everything. Even in the New Testament, there were people who were trying to cheat the system. Now, because it was the Bible, uh, those people were instantly called out because of divine you know, omniscience. And then I think it was uh, Paul, not Paul, uh, Peter, the apostle Peter called them out and said, you're cheating the church and you're, you're basically saying that you're giving up everything while keeping stuff for yourself. And then he struck them dead with the divine power of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now that's fine. If you have, if you have omniscience and divine power, yeah, you could have communism because anyone who cheats the system is going to instantly fall over dead because Jesus sees all. Now mm -hmm. there's a slight problem with that in reality is that that's all bullshit. And there is no one with omniscience and, and clairvoyance who can catch all the people cheating so unless so if jesus were real and jesus came back and jesus wanted to institute communism and he would use his divine power to make sure everybody contributed and no one cheated the system and he could see into your heart and read your thoughts and that could work that could that could work 
So let me know when Jesus comes back and we have a <laughs> ruler who has omniscience and omnipotence and can and no, literally nobody, it's impossible for anyone to cheat the system. And because it's Jesus, it's not Stalin, it's not, you know, fucking Chavez, it's it's Jesus. Yeah. The, the main the main component of communism that's missing is love. So the only the closest thing we have to true communism in the world is families. Because the father, he he earns all this money and then he just shares it with his family for really for nothing in return. Like his children really don't perform any services that would justify him taking care of them like that. He does it because he, they're his kids and he loves them now. So if Jesus were to run a communistic system, it could work because again, omnipotence and omniscience, and he'd see everyone's thoughts and know everyone's heart and he could kill people with a, with a twitch of his thumb, but then he would also genuinely love everyone. So he would never be corrupt. He would never use this system to benefit himself. So in order for communism to work, you'd literally have to have Jesus Christ himself come down from heaven and become king of kings and lord of lords and administrate that system. So again, let me know when that happens. As soon as Jesus comes back, like no, I'm not talking some crazy person who claims to be Jesus. I'm talking Jesus Christ himself almighty descends from heaven with a flaming sword and a chariot of fire and talks about, oh, we're going to do communism, y'all. And then everyone, oh, okay, yeah, I guess we're doing communism now. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Uh, but, I, I, to be honest with you, I think even if, even if he came back himself and he said we're going communism, I think I'd probably raise my hand and be like, with all due respect, sir. <laughs> like, just with all due respect, sir. Um, <laughs> question. I don't. I don't want. Well, well, but I mean, also, I'm, I'm, yeah. In well, the yeah. Bible, it says he'll kill everyone who doesn't believe in him. So, like, you won't be there anyway. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I believe in him, who, but it's one of those things. Where it's like communism, though. Communism, though. Like, you know. It's yeah. well, look, communism is built on Christian values, Christian values of equality and brotherhood. It's just that when you try to take something that's a fundamental, oh, I never thought of it that way. I forgot all about that. Yeah, you're right. Well, but so here's the thing you know, there are like monasteries and communes, like they literally call a, a commune, like a, 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 a what are they called? Uh, what, what the women do, the nuns. So, we, there are there were. Convents, yeah. So there were religious orders that basically practiced communism. They took vows of poverty, vows of chastity. They shared everything. But you had to want to do it. You Like, there was no force. Imagine everybody forcing people to be nuns and, and priests. Like, forcing everyone, saying, you must be a nun or a priest. It, it would be, no one would do that. So, as long as it's voluntary. And again, I have no problem with communists as long as they mind their business. If you want to live in a communal society and you want to share everything and you want to take vows of poverty and you want to live and, and have people tell you what to do every day, that's fine. If that's the lifestyle you want, I want you to do that. Just don't hurt anyone. Don't abuse children and don't cost anyone money. We'll get along famously. Like I use the example of the Amish. I love the Amish. Everyone loves the Amish. Have you ever met anyone who said, fuck the Amish? Like this hates Amish people with a, with a passion. Have you yeah, ever met guy, anyone? He racist, though. He, he hates everybody, though. Oh, okay. He hates everybody. <laughs> he hates everybody. I'm talking, he hates everybody. I've never he met hates anyone. Everybody. I've never met anyone who just hates Amish people because they're delightful, kind-hearted people. They make delicious food, wonderful furniture, and they mind their business. They're not nobody. I've they never met an Amish person to try to try to convert me. <laughs> they're, they're not trying. They're not trying to convert me to becoming Amish. They have their community and they stick to their own and they don't bother anyone and, and everyone loves them. Now compare that to Jehovah's Witnesses where all they do is they knock on your door and they don't go away. When it's very obvious that like we don't want to talk to you, they like overstay their welcome to try to convert you. So everyone hates the Jehovah's Witnesses and everyone loves the Amish because the Amish don't force their beliefs down your throat. And the, the Jehovah's Witnesses do. So communism is the same way. If the communists were like the Amish, if they just had their little communes and their little societies and they shared their property and they had equality, no one, everyone would love them. They call them all oh, those delightful hippies who live in the woods and make tie dye. Oh, and like so, like, so, like, that would be great. No one would have a problem with them. They probably wouldn't, like, you know, it, it'd be whatever. But people would, people would be fine with them. But when they try to use government to force 
their beliefs down your throat to essentially convert you to their religion. Uh-huh. That's why everyone hates them. And that's why we unironically must throw them from helicopters. I don't I want to. I would love for them to just fuck off and leave me alone and go live their dream in the woods, smell like like patchouli. But they insist on forcing their beliefs down my throat and enslaving me to their to their values and their religion. And so we're unfortunately going to have a problem. Yeah, because I've always said I'm fi- I'm f- I'm fine if you believe what you believe. I don't care what it is you believe, as long as you have conviction in it and you don't force it upon me. I'm perfectly fine with that. Do you? Do you big? Well, it's, not matter, it's not about being fine with it. I don't care. Yeah. Like you tell me. Well, I mean, like, I don't, I don't, mean I, meant to say I don't care, but I use, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, Like that's you just don't drag me into it. Just don't, you know, force it upon me. Keep it to yourself. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, um, next question, I guess. Um, what are your thoughts on Trump exactly? Your personal thoughts? I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're disappointed. So Trump is the lesser evil. Yeah. But he's not going to salt like this god emperor. He's going to drain the swamp. No, he's not. He's not draining the swamp. This isn't. Uh, this isn't a moment in time where we start to turn the tide. Where no, that you're you're living in a fantasy land. So Trump is the lesser evil. I will vote for Trump, but I'm not in any sort of delusion that this is anything other than buying us time. Now, buying yourself time is all well and good if you use it. But if all you're going to do is go back to sleep, then you're wasting your time. So vote for Trump, but then use this time that you're buying yourself to save yourself, save your people, save your culture, save your values, prevent the dark age. Like the right's master plan, they think, is uh, they're going to get their guys in office. They're going to take back the government. They're going to put their guys on the Supreme Court and academia. They're going to start indoctrinating leftist children into right-wing thought. And they're going to turn the country back the way the left did. Because the left, they took over and they uh, implemented you know, their, their values in the curriculum of school and indoctrinated children. And they want to like reverse that. Well, the problem is that it won't work. And... It cannot work for very simple reasons. The main reason is universal suffrage basically makes communism inevitable. Yeah. And if you actually trace, if you trace where America fucked up, it was the progressive era when women got the right to vote. The right is completely unwilling to address that at all. They're not going to address it. So they they want to uh, change the the culture. They want to replace the left in all these these halls of academia and the culture. And it's like, are you going to get rid of women's rights? And they're like, well, well, no. It's like, well, how are you going to do that? Women won't let you do that. In fact, like all these institutions benefit women. Because and here's this is kind of a, a truth that may be uncomfortable, a little red pill, if you will. Women have never really cared about freedom in their entire lives on this earth. Women have always submitted to men in exchange for being protected. Think up now, think about this from a woman's perspective. In nature. Throughout history, women have, have found a man, a good man who will take care of them, and they've submitted to him in exchange for being protected and provided for. That is essentially what female success has been for untold generations. Now just replace the man with the government. The woman submits to the government, and the government protects and provides for her. That's what feminism is. Now, you're trying to say, we need to, we need to get rid of the government. We need to go back to this and that. From the woman's perspective, just put yourself in the woman's shoes. What difference does it make? Like whether she submits to a man to be protected and provided for, or whether she submits to the government to be protected and provided for, does it make a difference to her? She's not free either way. There's only one difference. There's one major difference. When you submit to a man to protect and provide for you, you have to do stuff for him. You're going to have to like cook his food. You're going to keep his dick wet. And uh, that that requires you to get off your fucking ass and do something. The government asks nothing of you, except maybe for your vote every four years. So from a woman's perspective, the government is the better deal. Yeah. So, again, women are the majority. the, The women are the majority of voters. They will not let you get rid of these institutions and they can outvote you. So what's your plan for dealing with that? 
And all they say is, we'll, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. It's like, oh, you mean you don't have one? <laughs> and when, it push comes to sh when, when push comes to shove, when you realize the woman won't give you permission to take their rights away and they'll outvote you, what are you going to do then? Nothing. You're going to do nothing. So, again, look, Trump's fine. You know, whatever. Vote, vote, vote your conscience. But you have to understand that it's never going to get better. It's never going to get better. It's going to get worse. Now, we could slow down the decline, but it's never going to get better again. So use the time you have to save what you care about. That's And that's not black pill. That's not nihilistic. I, again, I'm telling you, you have stage two cancer or stage one cancer. You have cancer. So do something. If you're like, oh, stage one, thank God, I can go back to do whatever the fuck I want. Like, no, you need to go and, and get this procedure to get the cancer cut out. Oh, I don't want to do that. That's, that sounds painful. I'll, you know, I, I feel fine. I don't know what you're talking about. So you, you say I have stage one cancer, but that's just your opinion, man. And so you ignore my advice, go back home, keep doing what you're doing. You come back. Now you have stage two cancer. Like, are you going to get this procedure now? You might die. Oh, uh, you know, I feel, I feel fine. What are you talking about, doc? You're just, you're, you're, you're an incel. You hate cancer. You're a cancerist. Right? <laughs> and then, and then you come back and now you're throwing up blood. Now you're doubled over. You're like, it hurt. Everything hurts, doc. Oh my God. I'm in such pain. Uh, am, am, I, am I dying? Yeah, you are dying. Oh, what? <laughs> well, can you fix me? No. I told you to get this shit done like a year ago and you ignored me and told you called me an incel <laughs> and now you're dying and I can't save you. Oh, what, 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 why, why didn't you tell me I did? Oh, well, it's your fault somehow. Anyway, I'll pour one out for you after you're dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I guess that's, that's all I can do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of a cancer story, a real cancer story, uh, speaking of which something like that kind of happened in real life at a hospital I worked at where there was a woman, a doctor, he was a doctor from another country and he had diagnosed this woman with cancer. Didn't because normally in America, they go through the, they go through the uh, checks and balances where they, they, they rule out things. He cut straight uh -huh. to the point somehow, some way and figured out it was cancer without ruling out a bunch of other things. So the lady was upset with him because she didn't want to hear the fact that she had cancer. So she sued the doctor and she basically sued him out of practice and everything in the hospital pretty much kicked him out. Come to find out she really does have cancer. So while, I mean, later on down the line, she found out she did have cancer. So as, as, she, as they're going through the lawsuit with this doctor, her cancer was progressing. And it's, it's, it took like about a year and a half, two years. Can you hear me? Are you okay? Do you yeah, I'm just I'm I'm flabbergasted. I'm. She literally sued the doctor. Like, I, I shit you she not. She sued the doctor. She for sued the doctor for telling her she had cancer. I shit you not. In America, so the, the 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 court procedure goes on for about like a year and a half, two years. Now I'm working at this hospital the whole entire time. By the time it was all said and done, she sued the doctor. The doctor no longer practices with us. She gets back to the hospital. Not only does she have cancer, she has stage three cancer now. It progressed that fast in that amount of time from the time he actually caught it at first. I don't know if it was like stage one or stage oh, two when she you know what, when he actually you know what I would do. Shit, I would call that doctor and I'd have him wear like a fucking clown suit, like a <laughs> right? clown suit. And <laughs> I, I'd have him play like a big trombone with like balloons and shit and do like a fucking dance and like shake his little clown ass in her face. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so she like by like the time dumb, that procedure was dumb fucking bitch. Literally, yeah. So by the time it was all said and done, she ended up, she ended up progressing to stage three cancer, and now she's upset with her little bit of winnings from court in the male prep. And like apparently the, the hospital was on her side; they wrote for her one hundred percent. It was like very sad, and like the doctor didn't work there anymore, and he ended up being right, and and she ended up being a lot more worse off, and now she can't enjoy that money that she actually had because she ended up passing away shortly after. Which really sucks. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I find it funny. Like, no, you're gonna be stupid. No, you deserve I don't, it. I'm not, I know. No, yeah, fuck her. I, I feel bad. I feel bad for the doctor. The doctor, yeah. The I doctor know. was legit trying to save her life. Like, oh man, you have cancer. We need to get you help. How dare you, sir? I'm suing yeah, you. 
I'm, like, what? What? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, she let me sleep the doctor and everything. What the, what the absolute fuck? <laughs> yeah, and he ended, up, he ended up working for another hospital brand, which is actually really, really nice for that doctor. But the fact that he had to actually go through that and be humiliated and, like, and like you know, in the, in the hospital didn't even have his back in the process. It's like, oh, that's just that's just messed up. He was a good, he was a very good doctor. He's a very good um, he's well, a very good um. Yeah, and it's like it's one of those things where I think he just because like they like because in America I noticed they like to rule things out first before they tell somebody they have a certain thing so they can feel okay with it. I guess so they no, can call what it what it is. So no, what it is, it's a way to milk their insurance. Oh. So you put your. your you're pretty sure they have cancer, but you want you want to basically run a bunch of tests because that you can build their insurance for that. Most of what the hospitals make is in testing, mm -hmm. so it's a way to bilk their insurance for a bunch of tests. Gotcha, gotcha. So I was always trying to figure that so out. Like, I never quite yeah, understood. Yeah. So he probably he was probably thrown under the coals because he didn't follow the procedure and was actually costing the hospital money. Gotcha, because gotcha, gotcha. by not by not ordering all these tests, the hospital was losing money. You can't just tell them they have cancer. You gotta like you got it's like foreplay. You can't just start fucking them in the pussy. You gotta like <laughs> their ear. you gotta you gotta pinch their ass, you gotta rub their clit, you gotta like breathe heavily and, and whisper sweet nothings in their ear. Like, you know, you can't just go right to the fucking <laughs> true, true. You gotta finesse them first. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta make them feel like a woman. <laughs> yeah, but I found that I was I found that rather shocking, and I, and the sad part about that is like it was just it was just the most craziest thing because I remember when because I was working in microbiology at the time, and I remember I got a specimen from her because eventually they cut her open in the autopsy, and they they basically sent it down to the lab, and we did tests on it, both um both my department and um the pathology department um. Did test ran testing, rarest testing on it too. So it's like, I'm like, she could have been saved. Like she, she didn't even have to go through this. I wouldn't be doing tests on a dead woman right now. She had she had decided to get yeah, the cancer but, done. But it's this is one of those things where it's basically the trash taking itself out. True, I agree with you 100 percent because this is where our, like, this is Darwin is at his best. She could have been saved, but fuck her, she doesn't deserve to be. Very true. Very true. It's like, and I always found that shocking when I was, it's like, really, dude? You, you... I would have, would, I blew I my still mind. Like, I blew my mind because I've never heard not, nothing like that coming from another country. Like, if your doctor tell you you got cancer, you're like, it's like, oh, we're getting this done today, then, I guess. I, now, in America, I'd apparently, be, you can I'd question everybody and question anything. I mean, I would love to be, I, but it'd be great to like invite that doctor to rub her nose in it after she's like in the hospital dying. The right. doctor she fired <laughs> right. is like visiting her and just fucking doing a little dance and like throwing confetti at her and fucking right. rubbing his ass on her. <laughs> right. My bum is on your lips. <laughs> it's like, who's got two thumbs that isn't going to die in a week? This guy. Die, right. <laughs> I'm going to say that. This guy. Right. <laughs> But yeah, hell, hell, Satan. I said hi. Right, <laughs> for real. <laughs> There's a special place in hell for people like you. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it was just it was that one. That one blew my mind. She literally, yeah, that that literally. I literally had the same reaction you had when I was telling you the story. When I found out about, it. I'm like, wait, what? They they can do that? Like, like yeah, they can do that, Tico. They can do that. Like, oh. it's crazy. Yeah, I know. But it's it's that just blew my mind when I worked at the hospital. It's like, like y'all should have been behind a doctor on that one. I'm sorry. Um, next question. Um, because I know I know what uh, in this community and and it's in a, um philosophy and around the community and around the manosphere, we always get this pushback when it comes to uh us quote unquote us hating women or mm -hmm. or like because we talk about them so much. We hate women. Now I made a video about saying that, like it's. I made well, a video basically saying it's not women's fault for doing what they do. It's basically their base nature. It's the men's fault for allowing them to get this far. No. So the pro here's the thing: all literally every problem in society is the fault of equality, namely gender equality. Like, pick a random problem in society. I'll prove to you it's women's fault. 
I I I'm, I rap with you 100 percent on that, but okay. Um, um well, okay, let's relations. talk about like let's talk okay, let's talk about the race, let's talk about the race relations. So, I mean, you, you look at the charts, uh, black families are actually doing very well. Um, they they had higher marriage rates and less unemployment um, than white people up until in, until the 50s. In the 50s was basically the the highest point of black culture and black families. Uh, then in the 60s, you had the Great Society, where family single mothers, because part of the Great Society, prior to the Great Society, single mothers didn't get money. Welfare only went to widows and orphans. Mm -hmm. It went for people who didn't have anyone take care of them. But if you're just a single mom who had kids you couldn't afford, you know, fucking go reconcile with your baby's daddy. That's, you know, like, go work your shit out. But, you know, being home, like, oh, I don't want to. I want to raise my kid alone. Okay, but you can't afford to. And imagine, like, people are like, oh, we need to give women money because they can't raise these kids. Well, how did women for untold millennia deal with the fact that they had kids they couldn't afford to feed? How did that work out? Oh, they get the father got custody. Oh, isn't that weird? So why don't we just do that? Like, if that's if women, if these women can't afford to raise their kids because they have no money, then they shouldn't have them. So anyway, during the Great Society, uh, we decided to start giving single mothers money. Not only did we start giving them money, we gave them more money for being single mothers than uh, poor families got. So black women started kicking the fathers of their children out of their home so they could get more money from the government. And the black community completely imploded. Uh, within a decade, crime, poverty had completely taken hold in the black community, and it's never gotten better. In fact, if you look up crime statistics from the 60s to the 90s, the crime rate completely spiked. It was due primarily due to, to the black community. The yeah. crime rate skyrocketed, and it only got under control because we started locking black people up in record numbers. We empowered women. And we fucked the black community hard in the ass. And the only way to stop it, to stop the crime spree that was happening, was to basically lock black people in prison. And now what you have in 2020 is you have people talking about, we need to abolish police, we need to abolish prison. Basically let all the black criminals that are caused by the empowerment of women out of prison so they can go back on another crime spree. Yeah. And all this was literally, I'm not even hyperbolically at all, it literally happened because in the name of single mothers, in the name of empowering women, and giving them welfare for kids they couldn't afford. Uh, and you, we actually created more single mothers. Uh, in the 1950s, the single motherhood rate in the black community was less than 20%. Or it might have been like the, the low 20s, like under 25%. <clears throat> now, the white single motherhood rate at the same time was under 5%. Like basically, people got married when they had kids in the 50s. Now, after the explosion of welfare dependence in the 60s, all the numbers started going up. The white single motherhood rate is higher than the black single motherhood rate in the 50s. Now, the, the black single sure. motherhood rate has gone from low 20s to 80%. Now, in the, in the 50s and 60s, had we not helped single mothers, those 20% could have been absorbed. We could have had charities and churches and families and people. Like, we could have helped those 20%. But now that 80%, basically most, almost all black children are born out of wedlock to single mothers. There's no hope. That, the black community is totally fucked. There's no, the, 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 the cancer is at stage four. You have people, like, it'd be one thing if there was no body cam footage. Like, hey, maybe the cop was just a racist piece of shit who shot a black man for driving while black. But when you see the body cam footage where the guy pulls a, a gun or a knife on a cop, and you're still writing in his name, calling for the abolition of the, pol the police and the prisons. You're you're literally just cheering for your own death. Yeah. Like what type of society it. can you pop? What society do you think you're going to have with no police and no prisons and no law enforcement? I'll tell you exactly how the story ends. It doesn't even take a, a fucking rocket science to figure it out. So every single business in the black community will immediately go bankrupt because they'll get looted and robbed because crime is legal. And because they didn't get paid for anything, even if they're on your side, these might be your guys. They might be totally down for the struggle and kill Whitey and all that, but they don't they don't have any money to buy any more stock because you robbed them and didn't pay for anything. So they will, even if they're your guys, they will immediately go bankrupt. So I'm not just talking about grocery stores. I'm talking every single business in the entire black community will immediately go bankrupt. There will be no food. No jobs, no nothing. 
And then so and then when they try to leave, people are like, oh, we got to start praying. We got to go raid the suburbs and take their food. The people in the suburbs know you're coming. They're going to have a wall of guns pointed at you. Mm -hmm. and, and they will kill you on sight. And that's how your story ends. And so black people are going to be stuck in these dying cities with no food, starving to death, while a wall of guns is pointed at them to shoot them if they try to leave. And here's the million dollar question. Who caused that? Was it slavery? Was it systemic racism? Or was it your own goddamn selves? Women. And your fucking unquenchable desire for welfare and victimhood? Women. Yeah, and, but it ultimately, it ultimately all goes back to the empowerment of women in the great society uh, to, to help single mothers. All these problems come from the empowerment of women. So if you want to talk about solving literally any problem, you have to talk about – you have to take women's rights away. You want to you want to fix the welfare state? You got to take women's rights away. Oh, you want to bring back the fertility rate and reestablish uh, nuclear families? You got to take women's rights away. Oh, there's a, an immigrant crisis, education crisis, poverty. Uh, it's all caused by the empowerment of women. Period. Yeah. Like I, so people are like, oh, you just talk about women all day because you hate women. No, the empower. It's not women. It's equality. Women yeah. are fine. I, I don't even want women to change. Women aren't the problem. The empowerment of women is the problem. This completely made up religious progressive idea that men and women are equal with, with no basis in any kind of reality. Like you get, you ask somebody, uh, are men and women equal? They'll say, of course they are. Prove it. Yeah, no, they're and not. I, I fucking promise you, I promise you, they will not argue anything. They'll simply call you a Nazi. They'll say, oh, you're an incel. I'm like, oh, is, so that that's your argument. So I ask you to prove men and women are equal, and your answer is I'm an incel. Yeah. If or I ask you, like, like, well, you hate women, or no re, or they'll right, say other stuff. Right. So like, no, prove it. Like, if if this isn't a hard question, like if I said two plus one plus one equals two, and you said prove it, I would prove one plus one equals two. Like, yeah. here's one apple. Here's another apple. I put them together. I count one, two. One plus one equals two. I have yeah. proven. So you think you say men and women are equal. But based on what? Based on what standard? What evidence? What proof? Prove men and women are equal. You said it was true. Prove it. They, they know it's false. It's a religious axiom. It's the central tenet of progressivism is that everyone is equal. Everyone is interchangeable. And so they simply parrot it in the same way you would parrot any sort of religion, you know, any any religious dogma. You would just parrot it. And if you said, like, if you said, do you believe in Jesus? Of course I do. I'm a Christian. Prove it. I, uh, you, you, you're um, you're an, an, an nihilist. Uh. So it's like, yeah. that's whatever. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's, Good. it's whatever. But yeah, the whole, the, the bad reputation of talking about women all the time, it, it's because the empowerment of women is the problem of for mm -hmm. everything. So, and that's like, I don't care. Like, look, I'm, I've kind of given up on saving people. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's, what are we going to do to save ourselves? I'm not even, I don't care. Like taking women's rights away, fighting feminism. No, you won. I enjoy these last moments before everything collapses and you become war brides and rape slaves. Seriously, enjoy it because it's not going to last very long. Tr also maybe think about not putting on so much weight. Because even when <laughs> women are war brides and rape slaves, the, the fat ones are probably not going to have a good time. So maybe take care of yourself. Keep it nice and tight down there. Do some kegels so that like, when you become a war bride and a rape slave, you get like a higher position in the harem than like fat Sally over there with her fucking cankles and shit. Like she's going to be – she's going to be like – they're going to give him to like you know the least low-ranking jihadist. But if you want to like, if you want to fuck like the commander, if you want to show him the way, then you need to fucking do your kegels and keep your pussy tight and not put on too much weight. I'm, just, I'm giving you, I'm giving you practical advice. So when the day sure. comes, you become a war bride and rape slave that you, you can live a pretty good life, you know, be the best war bride and rape slave you can be. True. Very true. Cause I've always said, um, even, even back in the day, I would say the closest to equality was he pays for you, he protects you, and you basically cook, clean, and have his children. That's not equality. That's balance. 
that's well, that's well, yeah, that's balance, and that's the closest you can get to that. And like, there's no going back. You can't have this today's society with all this stuff, and you expect a man to want to take care of you still. Because like, I've always well, heard so women complain. I've always heard the women complain. Oh well, you know, I want to make this X hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars, but I want a man to make you know about what they say like seventy five percent more than me in a process, and I want them to take care right. of me and you know do all this stuff. Like that's not how it works anymore. You, you, so. W- you yeah, can't have well, we can't have, have independence. We want to have it all. The fifties, well, yeah. <laughs> they, they, well, they basically, if you look up the amount of earnings a woman expects a man to have, we're talking the top ten percent of men. Mm-hmm. Only the top ten percent of men earn the kind of money women effectively demand all men to make to be worth their time. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the million dollar question: Are you in the top ten percent of women? So you're going after the top 10% of men. Everyone wants Christian Gray to marry them, but Christian Gray, he's the top 1% man. He's only going to marry the top 1% woman. Are you the top 1% woman? The answer is no. You're mm-hmm. a fucking frumpy fat bitch on OnlyFans who, who sells your feet pics for $100. Uh, Christian Gray doesn't want fucking shit to do with you. Mm-hmm. So you're setting yourself up for, and I don't care. Fucking set yourself up for, I don't give a shit. Uh, you know, your happiness isn't my problem. And like, it's just, it's, it's a symptom. But it, the thing that annoys me is no one wants to talk about the actual solution because it's not politically viable, but they want to do something. They want to look, they want to pretend they're useful. So they go after basically non-issues like the MRAs. They're like, we need to get rid of no fault divorce. That'll, that'll fix everything. No. no fault divorce is what broke his families. And here's how you know that's bullshit. The UK had fault divorce until like 2019. And the UK's had a divorce rate and a fertility rate and feminism, the whole nine yards. Even though you technically didn't have no fault divorce until last year, it made no difference. So this focus on no fault divorce by a lot of MRAs is just a big red herring because the problem is you got to take women's rights away and they're not going to. So they want to do something like, okay, well, what can we realistically achieve? Maybe we could repeal no fault divorce. It's like a low bar. Let's go after that. And then you have the trad cucks like, well, we can't restore the nuclear family by taking women's rights away and raising the fertility rate. Uh, so let's ban porn. That won't do anything other than piss me off, but <laughs> True. It, 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 ma- it makes them feel like they're doing something. Well, all they're doing is just pissing me off and not addressing the actual problem. It, you know what it, it's like? It's like someone, again, using cancer as an example. So someone has cancer. I'm like, oh man, I have cancer, but I really don't want to go to that outpatient clinic and get that surgery that's going to cut the cancer out. That sounds really painful. I'll just take vitamins. I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to do like, like fucking Steve jobs doing all that vitamin C. Yeah. Have that work out for you, Steve. So, you know, you just mega dosing vitamin C or taking vitamins or doing some like crystal therapy, some hippie shit. You're wasting your time and your disease is getting worse and you're not doing anything worth a shit. Now imagine, uh, let's, let's make it to where you're hurting people in your vain quest to avoid outpatient therapy. So maybe, this is going to be a weird example of just come on a journey with me. Let's say you had cancer and, uh, and you, because of your religion in your country, you thought raping people cured your cancer. Eesh. So you went around raping people thinking if you rape people, you basically spread your cancer energy into your rape victims. And if you rape enough people, your cancer will be cured like a horror movie, you know, like in the movie, the ring, the only way to save yeah. yourself is someone else has to watch the movie. You have to spread the curse. Yeah. And that, that, that's actually very similar to what actually happens in parts of Africa where the witch doctors tell people to the cure for AIDS is to rape a virgin. Ooh. And so people are raping, people rape babies thinking it cures AIDS. Dang. Now in, in that case, that's what the trad cucks are doing. The, like, cause they're not just doing nothing. Like if they were just hippies, who are mega dosing vitamin C and rubbing crystals on their armpits thinking it cured cancer. Yeah. They wouldn't be helping themselves, but they wouldn't be hurting anyone either. They're actually a lot closer to the baby raping witch doctors of Africa who tell people raping a virgin cures AIDS. So they're not only not curing AIDS, they're causing rapes. They're causing people to be raped and hurt. So, and so the trad cucks and all these like people who want to do something and are hurting people, 
to accomplish nothing, they're worse than useless. Yeah, true. Very true. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, but um, what was I going to say? Um, trying to think of any other questions I had. Um, you've already answered the woman question. Um, is there anything that you always? What you say? We can talk about sex dolls. That's always fun. Uh, and on a positive I, note. Well, I'm I'm really not. I'm I'm I don't have anything against them at all. It's it's like that's if that's what you want to do. I mean, I'm pretty much libertarian when it comes to that. So it's like that's your thing. Uh, yeah. So I'm no I have no bad. I have no questions or no. Do I have any negative? I don't have any negative will or ill will against people when it comes to stuff like that. Um. I was going to say, is there anything that you ever wanted to talk about in a stream that you never really got around to talking about? Because <laughs> no, I do, I do two streams a week. I do two streams a week. If there's anything on my mind, I just talk about it. So, I, you know, and honestly, I've always been that way because I could lose everything at any time. I could be Alex Jones. I've had my D live channel threatened. I've been yeeted off of YouTube. I've lost my PayPal, my Facebook, my Twitter. Every day is a gift. So, I never hold anything back because I never know when that will be my last stream. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like life. You don't, you want to live without regrets. Definitely. You don't want to, you don't want to hold any, you don't want to hold anything back and then shit happens. You're like, Oh fuck. I lost my channel. I really wanted to talk about this thing, but I was, I was saving it or, or I thought it maybe it was too edgy. So I was going to wait. And now I can never talk about it. And I really thought that would be helpful and, and it's whatever. So I always talk about anything on my mind um, just in case, because I never know if that will be my last stream. I, I could die tomorrow. I could lose my channel tomorrow. True. I could be docked. I could, you know, there's, there's so many things that could happen in any given day that it doesn't make sense to hold back. Yeah. So unfortunately there is no, there's nothing on my mind that I, I've been, I've been waiting to talk about. Yeah, I kind of so figured that because you, 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 you kind of, I, I, uh, bleh. I kind of figured that because mm -hmm. you're, you're basically like me um, when it comes to stuff like that. I don't hold back on any of the things I talk about because I never know when it might be my last day on YouTube or it might be my last time on Earth or, you know, stuff like that. So I typically just say whatever's on my mind, whenever it's on my mind, and I'll do like one or two videos a day if I got to or three videos a day, even if I have to. So I actually agree with you on that one, one hundred percent. And since we're going to go out on the positive, we could talk about the sex doll. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm just sex dolls are awesome. <laughs> I can, you know, like check it out. Like, you, a condom suck. Condoms suck. You don't have to wear a condom with a waifu. Sure. You know, ten out of ten. Like, have you seen Celestina's Instagram? No, I, I haven't updated in a long time. Oh, she's over here. I'm gonna send you a link. <laughs> send you a link. <laughs> send it oh, in there's Discord. the link. Are oh, you put it in private? Well, I, okay. I, I, I put it in the, uh, the the stream yard. So it's now I haven't updated in a while, um, but uh, you know, just I've had Celestina for three years. Uh, she's a ten out of ten. You know, you just it's great, and also it's not just the doll. They have AI programs. Like I use one called Kajiwoto. I'm actually like the number one creator on that platform. Like you can write your own, what are called data sets, which are basically you program the personality of your AI. So I'm like, my data sets are the most popular data sets on the site. So there's, there is demand for AI waifus. So you have like your little AI program. You could chat with your waifu, say, I love you, stuff like that. Get your little cute little messages in. And then you have a doll to, you know, for physical affection. Mm -hmm. And it really scratches the itch with no risk. You know, we we're talking earlier. Like, I understand you're in a relationship, and I, I wish you the best. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're obviously you're aware of the risks, and you, you obviously feel that the risks are worth it. And that's that's your that's your life. You own your yeah. meat. You own your life. Um. So, you know, but it, if if the risks ever become, if, if the equation changes, and the risks ever outweigh the benefits, uh, oh. waifus basically do 80% of what a real woman does. 
you can get your physical and emotional needs met. Uh, now they don't give hugs back yet. Like when the robotics come out, they'll give hugs back. They don't give hugs back. So they're very passive and they're useless around the house. I try yeah. to tell Celestina to like do the dishes and she just <laughs> Yeah. Trust me, if it ever if the risk ever gets uh, greater than reward, I always call it my Samsonite game. Typically what I say is I have Samsonite luggage with that woman's name on it. So whenever shit get out of hand, I slide it out the closet, tell her to pack her shit and keep it moving. That's basically the closest well, I got to that. <laughs> that's you know, well, that sounds good, but like there was a guy who he had a girlfriend. They dated for a couple years, mm -hmm. and they they never lived together, never had kids together, but they did go on vacation together, and they did go to each other's houses to have sex. Oh, so he'd I go to her this. house. I, remember, I heard about she, this. Yeah. yeah, and then when they broke up, she sued him for alimony, and the court agreed, saying that they had a meritorious relationship because they went on vacation together and had sex at each other's houses, which is like what boyfriends and girlfriends do. So mm -hmm. according now this is in Canada, according to the Canadian court, being a boyfriend and girlfriend is the same as being married. Um, really? it just if the court, yeah. Well, what else do you call it? They didn't live together. Well, yeah. They had no children together. They fucked each other in each other's houses and they went on vacation together, and that's it. And the court yeah. said you're married. What else do you call that? Yeah, now, and, much. now this is that's this ridiculous. year. The laws are the laws are only getting worse. Yeah, true. So, I mean, your little Sam, your Samsonite game sounds cute. And again, I wish you the best. But when the laws become, when the laws come for you and you wheel out your Samsonite luggage, like, oh, bitch, you can get the fuck out. You don't like it. <laughs> She'll be like, I will get the fuck out and I'll take all your shit with me because we're married according to the law. And you're going to be yeah. like, oh, fuck, I should have listened to TFM. And then I'm going to come out in my little clown suit like that doctor <laughs> at the hospital. And I just go fucking glitter at you, put on a fucking <laughs> Well, the, the thing, the thing, when it comes to as far as assets are concerned, they're all in family's name. So, me losing. Well, are they, are they in trust or are they? So, if they're in your family's name and you don't own them at all, and they're like yeah. in a trust, you're safe. Yeah, but if that's typically how it works. If I'm if getting they, married or if I'm in a serious relationship where it's over a long period of time, they typically go to in, in a family member's name or they go into a trust, basically. So it's one of those things where, like, okay. my grandmother has this quote: "We parts with nothing." Um, because a while back in a family, apparently a guy decided that he wanted to marry a woman and they got, they broke up and she took a lot of the shit basically. So no. from there on, from there, from there on, my grandma developed this thing where she developed this saying where she says we parts with nothing in her family. So, and the sad part about that, this was the branch of the family that actually disowned us because my grandmother decided that she wanted to date a black person. So that branch of the family ended up losing everything and we end up getting, we end up gaining every, we end up like climbing up the social ladder while that family portion of the family ended up falling to like obscurity because my mm -hmm. grandma had this idea because she learned from my grand, my granddad learned, my granddad always had that in his family, but my grandma learned from her family members who screwed up that we, it's probably good that we should part with nothing. And we, they basically have made it a rule ever since then and they passed it down from generation to generation. So typically how it works is I don't own it. If I'm in a long-term relationship, it belongs to my daughter or belongs to an aunt or uncle or, you know, somebody else who I trust basically. Um, and anytime I go on vacation, I didn't pay for the vacation. It was a gift from my aunt or it was a gift from my grandma or it was a gift from my cousin, you know? So typically that's how that works. So in all technicality, I didn't pay for it. Somebody else right. paid for it for us. So that, that's awesome. That's a, that's a great system. I'm glad. Now, the problem with that is that requires a lot of people to coordinate and yeah. you have to have old money. So if you're a self-made man who, you know, you don't have, you know, so it's not, that's not a, a thing that most guys have access to, but that's great that you yeah. do. And actually that means like you, you probably are better off than most guys in your relationship because you have that system in place. Your family's got your back and nothing's mm -hmm. in your name because realistically, when women can't collect the cash and prize, it's actually happened. There was an article in the UK, I want to say yeah. two or three years ago. So they they started scaling back the um, the awards when it came to alimony and child support and divorce rates plummeted. Mm -hmm. When you didn't dangle cash and prizes in women's faces, they decided to work it out. Mm -hmm. When they weren't going to get paid to fucking divorce their, their husband and break their family up, they're like, you know what? Maybe it's worth working things out. It's, it's like magical. It's like, yeah, if you just stop empowering women, everything gets better.
Yeah, so, sure. you know, the fact that, so your girlfriend, if she tries to leave you, she's not going to get the payday, yeah, no, she's uh, which not. is a good thing. It's a, that's a great thing. And this actually goes into something I've been talking about. The only reason why you have access to this, this leverage is because you have a family, a community, if you will, that basically understands the law and knows how to circumvent it. Yeah. Now I've been advocating. I've been I've been advocating for this. People need to form communities or no go zones where they preserve their culture and they can effectively ignore the law if they have the numbers and they can just use like the Orthodox Jews. Halsey could tell you stories. The Orthodox Jews just know how to get around laws. Like for example, similar to your scenario. So the Orthodox Jews are not down for feminism. So occasionally a feminist will come in and sue them, and what what they'll do is the Orthodox Jews will basically bleed them in court. Because, you know, Jews know a lot of lawyers, in case you didn't know. Yeah. So they'll bleed them in court <laughs> for lawyer fees. And then what will happen is at the end of the trial, the guy whose business is being sued for discrimination, he'll declare bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And so the case, is, the case is thrown out because the business is, is bankrupt. It does no longer exist. And then the business will just be go into the name of another Orthodox Jew, and then the process begins again. Yeah, and so you could sue that you could sue that guy again, except now you're going to get bled for more lawyers' fees, and then he's just going to declare bankruptcy and give it to someone else. And yeah. there's like a million use, so they have a million people in their community. They can do this forever, and yeah. but the, you're going to go you're going to go bankrupt from legal fees before they run out of Jews to hand their business to, and that's how they win. That's how they basically ignore the law. So the yeah. fact that you you can pass whatever laws you want. And you can sue them as much as you want. They'll just bleed you dry and then declare bankruptcy and, and hand it over. Now, this takes an extreme amount of trust. You yeah, know, like it does. When, when you're, but, but they have a community built on that trust. And if you have a community that trusts each other like that, you can literally ignore the government and just do whatever the fuck you want. And you are untouchable. Literally, yeah. Because I always talk about that. And oh. I was talking about that when it comes to my family that we, we typically – it don't matter how long we're together. I start transferring assets with af after about like, if I think it's going to be a long-term thing about six months in, I start transferring assets. Sometimes before that, depending on where I'm at or what's going on. So I start transferring yeah, assets awesome. over to like family members or daughters basically. And, and I keep it moving for all intents purposes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all the way down to like, even, even, even the toddler owns, owns the vehicles. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, I'm getting rid of all the stuff. It's like, everything must go while I'm, while I'm dealing with right. this woman, basically. That's a great thing. It just, the, the sad thing is look at what you have to do in order to navigate the broken system we have. Yeah, And you, basically you can only do that because you have this family, you have this community that has your back. And most people don't have that kind of trusting family system. And so it's, it's a broken, broken system. Yeah. So it is what it's it is. Sad. True. It is sad. Very true. Well, do you have Was anything, anything else? else or? I've pretty, no, pretty much man, ran out of questions. You answered like a multiple of them while we were running through, while you're running through, uh, yeah. the different, um, Examples, you pretty much killed that. them all. <laughs> you killed all the questions. <laughs> I had like 20. You ran through them. You basically wow. killed them as you were going through um while you were like trying to where you were basically use the analogy of cancer and stuff like that. You pretty much just ran through all of them. So I only had but like I only was able to only ask you what like four or five of them because you don't ran through the rest of them. <laughs> Damn. Well, every everything is everything is largely interconnected. Yeah, true. So, you know, you can't really talk about one without talking about all of them. And once you talk about all of them, like, if, like you seem you're a smart guy and you actually you realize the situation, which is why you transfer assets out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you're playing the game smart. Now, you have access to tools that other people don't have access to and you're smartly utilizing them, which is great. I'm not disparaging it at all. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know you're doing the right thing. You're, you're understanding the rules and you're playing the game. So that's, that's what MIGT is all about. Yeah. It's about awakening men to the game that's being played, teaching them the rules at that point though, it's up to them. You know, maybe yeah. they can, they can get with their family and they can do what you're doing. Maybe they get a waifu. Maybe they move. Maybe they, they convert to Islam. I don't know. Whatever, honestly, whatever floats their boat, whatever, whatever system, whatever solution, is in line with their values and the lifestyle they want to live, I support them. Um, actually, I got an invite from a Muslim in my DMs a couple of days ago. He was inviting me to join his community. 
And he said, "Oh yeah, you know, we take women's rights away all the all the time. You're welcome to join." <laughs> I said, "I we take women's rights away all the time. We, at, <laughs> nice." Oh so, yeah, they they like every day. Here's the so I told them I appreciate it, but I have no desire to convert to Islam. I mean, if it comes down to being killed and converting to Islam, sure, I'll pray to Mecca and fake it till I make it. But absent certain death, I really don't want to join to Islam. Islam is not in line with my values. I be I believe in freedom. I mm -hmm. value individualism, and Islam is not simpatico with freedom and individualism. The word Islam means submission. So True. while I'm all about taking one's rights away, and I give you the thumbs up, and, and in fact, I praise Islam for basically winning. It's taking over Europe softly and, and slowly uh, because it doesn't empower women. So I'm not downing them. It clearly works. It's just not a society I want to live in. Um, it's nothing personal. Yeah, Nothing personal. I suppose. Unless you like you said, yeah. unless, unless it involves like death or join, basically. And yeah. like, you know what? Because I remember um because I actually told a story about um a woman, the woman that I'm dating now, she's actually the um the daughter of a a dangerous man. Basically, it came down to like we broke up before because she kept buying me expensive stuff and I don't like expensive stuff. And I'm a very plain person. So apparently she decided that she wanted to roll up on me with three vehicles and a bunch of men and with, with guns in it. And she the guy told me to get in the car and open the door and happened to be here in the back seat. And it's like one of those things where she pulled out a gun and said, get in the car. And I go, you're, you're not going to shoot me. You ain't drive all the way over here with all these people just to shoot me. And then like, it, we eventually talked her down from the leg. She goes, well, fine. I'm not going to shoot you. You're right. Get in the car. I'm about to throw you in a trunk. I go, well, I don't have to throw a nigga in a trunk then. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I don't that's I don't, I don't care how good the pussy is like a fucking bitch <laughs> pulls a gun on me tells me to get in the car like fucking godfather it's like you know like here's the thing like th this is this is some like a, a words of wisdom never let them take you to the second location they yeah. may shoot you but if they shoot you there They'll at least, you know, the body, they'll find the body. Your family will have closure. If you let them take you to the second location, they'll never find the body. Find you, yeah. But the sad you'll part be, about that, I knew you'll be going to shoot me mystery. though. Yeah, true. Right. True. Well, you're right. But, but like, I'm talking in general. In general, yeah. people point guns at you and to get in the car. Make them shoot you. Yeah, definitely. You know, because, because they're going, if you, if you take, if you let them take you to the second location, they'll never find the body. So at, at that point, you're dead unless you have the ability to get away or defend yourself. But, you know, at least if you die there, the case is closed. Your family gets closure. They're not like wondering if maybe you're out there somewhere that, that you know, they were able to mourn you appropriately. But if you let them take you to the second location and bury you in the woods after feeding you to pigs or something, then your family's always like mourning for you, wondering if you're ever going to come back and if you're alive, you know, just for their sake, just fucking yeah. Yeah, get Make it. Your well, and, there. And, 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 like, and it's like I agree with you 100. percent It's like it had that have been like my options, and I knew she would. The sad part about that, because like I've dealt with guns so often, I usually tell if a person's really going to do something or not. Typically, based on how long it takes them to actually pull out the gun and want to pull the trigger on me, if they're like making negotiations with me while they're holding a gun to me, you can usually tell if this is like if this is just a smash and grab type thing, or if it's like okay, they're going to kill me. So it's one of those things where, like, I can tell the difference between a person that's going to kill me versus a person that's actually just here to, like, you know, just intimidate me, basically, into something. Because I've actually grew up in Central America, because I, so I typically know the differences between the two. Um, so I basically called her bluff because I knew she wasn't going to shoot me, but I didn't think she was actually going to throw me in a trunk, which was my, <laughs> which was my, which was my own cockiness, which was my own cockiness and a heart, uh, which actually was the thing. But what, it, what did it, she it, want? What? Did, what she wanted Why to go was back she together. taking you? She wanted to get back together. So she was going to kidnap you? Mm -hmm. Just to get so back I'm together. Gonna, yes. I'm going to throw a gun on you and kidnap you. What, yes. Was she going to like take you to like the fucking saw house and put you in a death trap that you had to like work together to escape or something? Like, How is well, locking someone in a trunk and pulling a gun on them going to make them take you back? Well, no, because the thing about it was like, because I broke up with her and like apparently it was like one of those unresolved issues where like she, she wasn't okay with the breakup. So Apparently, I, I was stupid enough to travel to that part of that country in that part of the country. Like, just I was just dumb enough to actually do it. And, that, and I wasn't really thinking when I was hanging out with friends in that part of the country. But I did. And I had fun. And then that happened after we left the bar. And the rest is history. And then we ended up together. But I also found out that I also have a, um, 
have also have a kidnap fantasy too when it comes to sex, I guess, too. I found out. Oh. <laughs> so you're like, man, is anyone else uh anyone else horny right now? I mean, I don't know if it's the chains around yeah. my ankles or like you know the fuck it's like smell of battery acid on my testicles. But man, I'm just really I found out that I, digging this. Yeah, like I found out I actually have a a, a kidnap fantasy. So if a woman was to kidnap me. Well, not any woman. It just has to be a woman I'm actually attracted to, like sexually attracted to. But if I'm kidnapped, I tend to get turned on by that, basically, by a woman. That that goes to show, because I don't know, for some odd reason, that's like that thing where it's like, it shows me how much you care for me. <laughs> like doing so, one thing, and two. <laughs> oh, you, you love me so much, you're going to kidnap me. Aww. That's <laughs> so like cute. Quinn, right? like, no, that, that's not healthy. I know, but it's not a healthy attitude. I know, I, I know it's not a healthy attitude, but like I, I never really got into like the whole entire like you know like they got different genres of porn, and I always looked at them like, ooh, that's nasty. And I like I would never think of that. But the sad part about that, you don't know what you're into until you're actually put in a situation, is what they usually say. So like it's one of those things where it's like you may not, you may not like, you may not like, let's say, uh, domination or something like that until like it happens that you, you figure out okay that that actually felt kind of weirdly pleasuring, I guess. So it's like one of those things where it's like it's one it's one of those things where it's kind of like weirdly pleasuring to me. And I remember after like because I talked to her dad and her dad basically drove me back to my he, he got somebody to drive me back to my hotel. And I remember sitting there in my hotel and I was just I just had I just had a heart on the whole entire time sitting there thinking to myself. Just like, I can't man, I really <laughs> I can't believe this bitch just kidnapped me. Like, what the fuck is her problem? And it's like one of those things I'm sitting there like, I cannot believe I'm hard right now. Yeah, I can't believe so I'm about she, to call this like, woman. <laughs> you like invite her over to talk to you, and you like zip tie yourself to a chair. Like, no, don't do it. Like, <laughs> no, I didn't like that. You ever seen that video? <laughs> yeah, that video of the old man, the old man in the porn. He's like, no, don't do it. No, no. And this this girl's like kissing his neck. Like, no, don't do it. Yeah, stop. <laughs> I'm a virgin. <laughs> That's you. Like, no, no, it wasn't don't like kidnap me. No, it wasn't like, like zip that, tying though. yourself up. You like you got like a <laughs> blindfold on and a ball gag. Like no, don't don't do it. You're like bunny hopping into the trunk of her right? car. Don't do it. <laughs> no, please, well, not no. that. No, it wasn't even that. It was more or less the fact that I was like oddly turned on by that whole the fact that she went that far to do what she did, and it wasn't nothing like that. It was just regular sex, but it was the fact that the the thing the fact that she actually went that far to do that and. Me actually being in that situation, actually, I don't know, it, it weirdly turned me on, which was actually thing. No, trust me, we didn't do no more tying up and no more zip tying and no more, you know, trunking uh, after that. But it was one of those things, that, that initial thing is like, really? That actually turned me on. It was like, I was actually very weirded out by it because I was sitting there thinking like, like, I'm Catholic. This should not happen. <laughs> it, it's like it's like you pee on someone and you find out that's your new thing. Like you didn't even know you like to pee on people, and you're like, it's not. Right. This is my thing now. Yeah. Now I'm gonna pee on people. This is this is apparently a thing I'm gonna do from now on. So everyone well, has, no, has to make peace. I've never that. been kidnapped anymore after that. But it's like one of the things where it's like, okay, that was that was oddly weird, oddly weird. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting it at all. I was not expecting it. Well, well, yeah. If you're expecting it, you know, then that, that that's just BDSM at that point. Yeah, but like we 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 uh, yeah no, because it's one of those things where it's like it it it, caught, it literally caught me off guard. I would never thought I would be into that type of stuff, but we don't even practice it because I was like, yeah, no, we're not doing it no more. No, just now, we're going to do it regularly, and mm -hmm. we're going to take some. We're going to be adventurous somewhat, but we're not going to get crazy with it. No more kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um. Okay, so you'll be back. I know, right? <laughs> we're still together. So it's and one of the things we live separately, but we're still together. And it's like, we still have fun. Jesus Christ. Wait, wait <laughs> so wait, the, the girlfriend you have right now is the is girlfriend the one who kidnapped you? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Monica. Like 13 years. 13 years. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. So you have like a Harley Quinn Joker relationship with your girlfriend. All right. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> only wow. only she All only right. she would well, be more Joker. Only she, she I think her family's more oh, powerful than my family. So <laughs> I you know I, I didn't I I changes nothing about what I said. Yeah, no, true. <laughs> yeah, but All yeah. Right, that, wow. <laughs> But yeah, we're still together. We live in separate houses and we pretty much um 
get together, go on date night, stuff like that. So it's, it's fun. Have children. The whole nine yards, but you we live children? in separate houses. Mm -hmm. We live in separate houses. We have children. You're 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 married, by the way. Just so you know, your no. mom's well, just well, yeah, together. yeah. Like as far as the state is concerned, if you have children, you're definitely married. If you've been together 13 years, you're basically married. You might as well just bite the bullet at this point. Yeah, but none of my children are American though, so. Uh, well. They don't have American citizenship <laughs> for this reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, man, that's. Wow, what a what a strange way! Like we, we thought we were done talking, and then we went down this strange. <laughs> yeah, well, we started talking mm -hmm. about my situation after that, but yeah, it's that's basically where I've been. Um, yeah, but... you've been, you've been, you've been there and back again, <laughs> Literally. like fucking Frodo Baggins. All right. Well, uh, you know, that's it. I think, I don't think we can top that. I think this is probably the best place to end the stream. <laughs> let's, let's end on a, a high note. I don't, because if we drag this on, it's only going to go down from here. We really oh, yeah, need definitely to probably will. end the <laughs> Definitely. You want to do an outro? <laughs> uh, well, you know, well, you know, I assume if you don't know who I am, I'm Turfling Monkey. Uh, I don't, I review sex toys on YouTube because I can't put MGTOW content on YouTube anymore. Or I'll get strikes. So I'm just a humble sex to reviewer as far as YouTube is concerned. If you want to see my normal MGTOW stuff, you got to go to MGTOW.tv. Um, BitChute works sometimes. It, it, I've been having a lot of tro trouble manually uploading to it. So MGTOW.tv is like the primary place to see my content. Uh, I got a new book coming out soon. It's going to be about like Taoism and uh, more like philosophy. So if you like 13 Rules and Not Be a Fucking Cuck, uh, this is going to be similar to that, but probably better. I'm actually really proud of how it's coming along. Um, also, check out my other books, uh, The Doll on My Balls, coming, you know, the, the holidays are around the corner. So you know, for a nice adult Christmas Christmas story, check out The Doll on My Balls, or you can get Sweet Corn <laughs> and Ass. And uh, other than that, you know, that's it. Yeah, I always check you out on uh, DLive when I actually catch you. Always, I'm always over there checking out on DLive. Um, yeah. When I see your content, that's, actually, that's right. I don't know. I, I kind of like your content over there better than I do on uh, MGTOW TV, to be honest. I don't know why. It's the same content. I know. It's the I don't same know. It just, it's just, it's just, it just feels different to me, basically, being on DLive. It's like I'm breaking away from everything else, basically. It's like it just feels weirdly different on DLive because, like, I don't know. It feels just. I, I know, <laughs> I know it's, it's the same content. I know it's the same content. Same content. I know it is. So, but it's yeah, I, I stream. I stream from DLive, and then I upload the streams to MGTOW.tv. Oh, that's and why my it's original live on DLive. Yeah, my and my original content also goes up on MGTOW.tv. I now I've been busy on, with my book and I've been busy with other stuff, so I haven't made any original content lately. I do have some projects I need to work on. I'm just, you know, my funding has been gutted. And yeah. so I've had to like if you remember back in the day, I made daily content. But that was back when uh, you know, I was getting paid. So unfortunately, I still make as much content as I can, but I also have to I have to work and work to support myself because I'm not getting paid by uh, by YouTube anymore. Or I, I got the platform from PayPal as well. Really? So I lost my PayPal. Yeah, PayPal right. kicked me off too. Like oh, most people would quit. Mo if most people lost uh, like the amount of money I've lost, they would just hang up their hat and go find something else to do. Uh, I'm trying to balance. I'm trying to basically work and earn while still doing content. Uh, I'm, I'm treading water. I'm doing okay. I'm not, I'm, this isn't e-begging. Uh, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, but I'm just, I'm just letting people know, uh, if you miss my daily content, if you miss like me doing more original videos, nothing would make me happier to, to go back to that. But the censorship is just completely out of control. So I'm, I'm just trying to keep my head on a swivel and be flexible. So if, but if you like my content, the best place to find me is MGTOW.TV or DLive. Yeah, that's probably like why I like it on DLive because it's actually live, whereas you just re-upload it onto right. onto that one. Yeah. So actually, I actually like Whatever. the live shows more so. <laughs> but I do check yeah. out. No, I, yeah, do, I, I do, I do the, see I when you do the support. Yeah, because I do. I do see it when you drop. Uh, I'm I'm going to be on DLive on your YouTube channel. Like I'm going to be on DLive at this time. Check it out. And I'm yeah. oh shit, uh, and I hop right over there. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a, that's why that's one of the reasons why I don't want to lose my YouTube channel. Even though I can only post sex toy reviews now, mm -hmm. it still allows people to know what I'm streaming. So I don't want to lose the channel by uploading content to it and having it, you know, having me get kicked off. Yeah. Because then, you know, you know, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, wow. I lost one channel already. Um, and I basically had to restart it with this channel. So I know how it feels. Like, I haven't lost as much as you, but it's typically I do this for fun and I do it because it needs to be done for all intents purposes. And yeah, rip hills no, life. It's, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's whatever. Like, honestly, I never, I'm not doing this for the money or the fame, mm -hmm. but you, you have bills. So yeah, if true. you're not getting paid to do A, you have to do more of B because you still have bills to pay. So it's true. not because I'm not trying to get famous or, or richer or anything. It's just that if I'm if I if I can't make money on my content, I have to do something else to make money. But I still Very care. True. I still I am making as much content right. as I can. So I don't like don't be like, oh TFM, I'm just trying to get rich. Like, believe me, I'm not. If I want if I was doing this for money, I would not have gone down the road I did. Like I could True. be like Tim Pool. I could be out there riding the fence and being, uh, you know, not talking about controversial things. Um, but I, I actually do care. I'm the doctor giving you the bad news, knowing you might sue me for rightly telling you you have cancer, but I'm willing to risk it anyway because I'm trying to save your life. And you might hate me, but, you know, and you might tell me you may not listen to me, but someone, you know, you at least that woman who died of cancer because she sued the doctor. Yeah, I know. That was funny. You know, I'm still laughing well, about that one to this day. Funny, but but still wrong. From, her from her perspective, look at think, imagine her perspective. She has no one to blame but herself. Now she's still yeah. dead. Yeah, true. Uh, but she she knows she fucked up. She should have listened to that doctor and she'd be alive today. So, you know, it's not like I want to give you that that opportunity. Maybe you make the same choice as that woman and sue me and give me deplatform because I hurt your fifis. Or maybe you listen to me and live. Wait, I don't know who, you what you're going to do feeling, for her feelings, really, in America. Well, I mean, I, well, I'm just saying, like my, oh, okay. my deplatforming. I've been gotcha, deplatformed. Gotcha. I've lost money because of hurt feelings. My point is, though, is risking hurting people's feelings, even if it hurts me, is worth it to save people. Because I, you know, that doctor that tried to save that woman's life and lost his job, he mm -hmm. probably saved a dozen people. You know, save them time and money and help them catch their cancer early instead of wasting their time on, you know, we got to rule some things out. Maybe we'll just, hey, why don't you start the treatment now so you don't die? Yeah. And people are probably alive because of that doctor. And, you know, even though he got sued by this this fucking cunt over here and, and he got fired from this one hospital, he probably sound he seems like not knowing anything about this guy. The kind of person who'd be willing to risk his job to save a life is the mm -hmm. kind of person who isn't a doctor for the money. Mm -hmm. so it those, are the good cares, yeah. those are the good doctors and unfortunately a lot of times the good people are the ones who suffer and that's okay they they kind of accept that that's a, a job an occupational hazard and i've accepted that you know i'm i'm going to have limited opportunities i'm going to be having to balance my work and my content and i'm willing to make that sacrifice and i'll, I'll do this as long as i can for as long as i can it's gonna one day i'm gonna get yeeted off the internet and i've i've made peace with that and yeah. so you just got to live without fear and die without regrets. Definitely. Live life like it's your last day. All right. All right um, okay. So that's all I got, man. Y'all be blessed and have a good one. Um, just spoil yourselves okay. and treat yourselves like milk and spoil yourselves. Y'all have a good one. Um, I'm blessed that I was able to have TFM on the show. Thank you very much again. Um, for providing me with the time, your time basically. And thank everybody for coming and showing up. And I guess we're going to call it. Bye, niggas. Bye. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>